Sports Radio 560 WQAM Miami Fort Lauderdale presents the Neil Rogers Show. To talk to Neil, call 567-0560, toll free for Dave and Broward, or pound 560 on your cell phone. The opinions of Neil, his guests, callers, or anyone else on the show do not necessarily reflect those of WQAM, Beasley Read Acquisitions, or the Beasley Broadcast Group. Now, Neil Rogers on Sports Radio 560 QAM. And I'm going to tell you something right now, and you can mark it down. If Broward County would change their mind and decide they wanted to build this facility, I will not play here. Because I will not have you guys looking at me for the next 10 years saying, here's a guy that said one thing and went out and did something else. <laughs> Ten oh three at five sixty WQM. Happy Wednesday to you. First thing I see when I come in this morning, and here it is. I got it in my hand right now, and the calendar too. Thank you, whoever, whatever mystery person left this for me after yesterday's show. At least I got some response on this from somebody inside the building, if not outside. Although I did have that one uh, slime ball, that one silly guy that called yesterday that bragged to me about he watches bass fishing on TV. Here's my 365 days of fly fishing calendar. All right. Something I've always wanted. Something I have no idea how I managed to go 57 years without. Yeah, look at this. They're different. There's a different kind of uh, uh, fish, a different kind of fly. I have a lot of experience with flies, but most of them have a zipper. But nevertheless, I mean, look at there's a striped bass and there's a big mouth uh, one and a bass too. And there's like a, a spotted and just beautiful stuff. There we go. Let's hear it. Oh. Let's watch some uh, bass fishing on TV. What do you say? No. Come on. Let's uh, let's put in four or five hours of sitting there watching somebody else stick his pole in the water, huh? Here's a great letter to the editor, by the way, from the Sun Sentinel. Here's our letter to the editor of the day. Headline says, very short, headline says, make drugs legal. Ray, your editorial, fight where it'll do the most good, October 6th. The last sentence reads, U.S. officials clearly need to be axing where they can get the most bang for the buck. I think the answer is simple. Eliminate the money, and you eliminate the drug dealers, pushers, growers, etc., and otherwise legalize drugs. Remember prohibition? Says Gene Kellner in Coconut Creek. There you go, Gene. Oh, nice job, oh. baby. Sounds a little bit radical to me. Sounds like something Jesse Ventura or Neil Rogers might say. Like the way things work in a real country where people are really free. Here's a mobile in North Miami. Hello. Yeah, Neil, uh, speaking in reference to the editorial that you were just reading, definitely legalize it, and it will definitely do a lot better. I mean, we could use so much difference for for the money. Put it towards our deficit. Put it towards all the BS. How about putting some schools so the kids can get an IQ larger than their toenail? How does that sound? I was just going to say that. I'm a teacher myself, and I think that that will definitely help us out. I mean, I have 40, 45 students in one classroom for a classroom of 28. It's ridiculous. Unbelievable. And, uh, I just want to tell you, I listen whenever I can when I'm not teaching class. I put on real audio in the computer, and I'll tell you one thing. Do not leave us. Please don't threaten to leave us because uh, you'll I'm definitely leaving. have a lot of, <laughs> hey, if you want to make us laugh, tell us we're leaving because that's all it is to me. I really love you, and uh, have a great day. God bless you, sir. Thank Bye-bye. you. Thank you. I'll pray for your kids in school. 
they need a prayer. This, uh, these, I don't want to get you nervous, Robert, but these monitors are just the uh, the overhead is low. Huh? You hear what? Oh yeah, well that's see that that's uh, his level is fine, but like with the overhead, it's all screwed up. Here. Don't start. You just you've been on the air for five minutes and already we're starting with technical crap again. Jesus Christ, Chrysler Motors. Now that they got the phone all fixed allegedly, well we had one call in here. Let's see how line four sounds today. Here you go. Sounds pristine and clear to me. How about line seven? All right. I think the phone lines are fixed. Oh. Now we'll see if anybody calls on today, which, of course, is another story after the last uh, seven or eight days. Well, they're having a little bit of a problem. They're going through a change of life. Of course, the big story is, oh, and by the way, I don't want to, I don't tell anybody I told you this, but it's very, 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 and nobody cares anyway. Very unlikely that Pavel Burry will be playing tonight. I would say the chances on a scale of zero are like oh. zero, the big O. Yeah. Why do they keep doing that? Why do they keep pissing off the public? I guess that's the uh, PR. That's what the P uh, stands for, pissed off relations. And the Panther uh, PR, they just don't get it. They don't understand. They, every time he gets hurt, which is like every other week, they keep coming up with this, oh, you know, he, he's got his finger sticking out there sideways and his pinky too. But uh, the, here's the thing in the, both newspapers. Now, in the Sun Sentinel, they kind of downplay that you have to read the uh, injury report. But in the Herald, David J. Neal makes no bone about it. With the picture and the whole deal, Burray may play tonight. Is he going to play? No. I would say, like I said, the chances on a scale of minus infinity. But they keep doing it because they really believe that if they lie to the public, that extra people will come out. And then, of course, what they don't understand is that if anybody did come out, which they won't, but if they did and he didn't play, they'd be pissed off. I mean, if you came out to see Pavel Burry play against the Atlanta Thrashers and he didn't play and you're sitting there stuck, even with a $5.60 discount from the first team this morning, wouldn't you be pissed off? Uh -huh. Yeah. So why why don't you just say he's going to be out for an indeterminate time, a period of time, until he gets it straightened out in his finger, too? Why can't you just say that? And here it is right there on the front page of the paper this morning. I can't believe that the phone isn't ringing off the hook already about this. All our Panther fans out there, let's hear it. Come on, let's go, Jolene. Let's see that spirit. We love you, Panther. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's ancient history. I'm sorry about that. Right in the front of the Herald, here's a big, big, fat freaking the story with a big, fat, bald-headed guy. Hypinga plans to sell the Panthers. Oy. Now, don't get panicky now. Team is tied to arena deal for 30 years. They can't go anywhere. So it says. Why don't we just start a rumor that they're, you know, huh? They're moving to Batavia. No, seriously, it's your last chance to come out because uh, they might get sold to the Batavia Pirates guy and are moving to Batavia, New York. And unless you come out tonight to see him against Atlanta, you might never see him again. They might be gone by uh, Saturday before the Buffalo game, if Wayne can find a buyer. Anybody want to buy the Panthers? No. And, you know, one of the greatest parts of this whole deal, well, many of the greatest parts are, of course, that Wayne wins no matter what, as usual. See, I don't understand. Why are we supposed to keep feeling bad for millionaires and billionaires? For John Henry, we're supposed to. By the way, Linda Robertson finally writes a great column today oh. in the uh, Herald. Nice going, Linda. Henry's numbers just don't add up. She says he's crazy and nuts and all the other good stuff. Nice going, Linda. They finally figured that out. See, the Herald's interesting, the way the Herald's operating lately. What they have been doing is sticking their finger, their crooked little finger like Pavel's, out the window to see which way the wind is blowing. Just like with Mayor Penis, that they were so enthusiastically behind, like the penny sales tax, and they saw the, uh, the result of the election, and all of a sudden they turned on him like a cornered rat. And they can't say enough bad things, even though they're all true, about Mayor Pinga. And now the same thing with the John Henry. Wasn't it the Herald and the Sun Sentinel both telling us about all the great things, that how desperately we need the goddamn stadium uh -huh. for the uh, quality of life, et cetera, and so on? Wasn't it our newspapers talking? Uh -huh. And now all of a sudden, like every columnist, every uh, everything, they're all warning us, uh, don't buy into this crap because uh, we got more important things to take care of. Nice going, guys. Oh! Better late than ever. Of course, that just happened after they saw those poll numbers. Remember those polls about a week and a half on a Sunday? And the overwhelming majority of people said, no, no to John Henry, stick it up your ass. Okay, take your Marlins, go to uh, Geneva, New York. Maybe the Marlins from Geneva could play the Panthers from Batavia. It's not far to travel. Sounds good to me. Give you some real cheap tickets. Come on out there. See those Panthers tonight. You coming? No. Come on, Panthers in Atlanta. Thrashers, baby. No. You'll have play. In fact, I think we're going to give you three seats for the price of one. No. I mean, we won't give you three tickets, but you'll have three seats to sit in. At least. Maybe four. Don't say that. Well, I just said it. It's true. Joe Zagaki sucks, okay? Well, I had communion, and my hands just...
started bleeding. This man suffers from the consequences of what some might call a civilized religion. Stigmata, the forming of bleeding holes in the palms of the hand, resulting from sacrificial blood guzzling. Hello, I'm Kipadada for the fight against stigmata. Now, a lot of you don't got a bother, but in case you don't want a stigmata bothering you, refrain from ingesting the body or blood of anybody, or you may never play handball again. Stigmata, it's sticky boom. 1015 at 560 WQAM. So anyway, the interesting parts about this, first of all, let's hear it. I'm happy as hell about this because we've been hoping for a long time that we get Wayne out of our face. Remember those days when Wayne was sitting there with Don Shula during that big year four years ago, and he had Shula down there and uh, that whole business behind the goal? Remember those days? Uh Yeah. And there was Wayne and Marty, and they're yelling and cheering, and they're doing, hey, go, Panthers up, and all that other crap. Now, all of a sudden, you can't get rid of him fast enough because, number one, he thinks the hockey team is dragging down the stock price of Boca Resorts, the team's public company, which has become primarily a hotel and resort company. (laughs) Of course, all you people that thought that you were buying into a hockey team, there's another one of those bait-and-switch deals that we're very good at here at QAM, by the way. There's one of Wayne's bait-and-switch deals, Florida Panthers uh, Holdings or whatever the hell they call it. And they thought, oh, well, you know, we're going to capitalize on the popularity of the team and that big uh, year four years ago to Stanley Cup run, and we're going to sell shares in it. And so a lot of people, you know, they, for whatever reason, they thought they were going to make money or they wanted a little piece of the team or something. Now, all of a sudden, it's a hotel stock with a different name. And Wayne says, well, uh, this hockey team, it's dragging down my stock. Of course, he's always got somebody or something that's dragging down his stock, whether it's Auto Nation. No matter what it is, he can't face the fact that everything he touches lately turns to everything his name is associated with. Yeah, and people don't want to buy it. So now Boca Resorts uh, is uh, they want to get rid of the Panthers. Get, cut that off, and now they'll make a lot of money. You think so? No. In the meantime, he's making the ones going to make a lot of money because he's going to sell the team for 175 million is what he's asking. Plus, here's the best part of the deal. Oh yeah, he says there's no NHL salary cap, and he fears hockey player salaries will continue to rise as they have in Major League Baseball, and he'll wind up losing his ass. In other words, he don't want to spend the money to put a quality product out there. He did spend the money for Pavlov Bure, who never plays, but he don't want to spend the money for any other free agents. Did he Did he go out there and spend a lot of money on anybody else? No. No, which is the reason why we have this hanging over our heads. Did he spend money to go out there and get a setter that can really play with Pavel Bure? No. No. See, this is the reason why they're so the whole organization is terrified. Every time Pavel has a bad bowel movement, every time he farts the wrong flavor, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Because they're in a panic because they got all their eggs in one casket. And you can't put all your eggs in one casket because otherwise you die. And that's what's happening with this. Uh, that's why nobody's showing up there. Even though they got off to that good start, which was very uh, fictitious, but nevertheless, they're sitting right there atop their division. But anyway, the best part of the deal for Wayne, not only is he going to get 175 or maybe more million for the team when he sells it, but he also, of course, just like in the Miami arena, he controls the profits of all the stuff that goes on there inside the Mac arena even after he sells the hockey team. So all the concerts that go on in there, all of these things, he's got his big, ugly fists stuck in there. He's got his zit-infested hands gra- grabbing all the goddamn money out of everybody's pockets with or without the hockey team. So what the hell does he need the hockey team for? And keep in mind, by the way, this is the same arena that the public spent. They came up with this creative uh, bed tax, whatever that was in Broward, $200 million in tax money to build for the Panthers. So crybaby Wayne wouldn't take him and move him to Tennessee, to Portland, Oregon, wherever he kept threatening to move him. But like I said, we ought to be celebrating. We ought to be having a party, all 20 of us who care, because the team is tied to this deal for 30 years. It's written in, in bronze, in Braille. They can't go anywhere for 30 years. So who the hell needs him? Who needs this guy? Let's get somebody who really appreciates hockey and knows the sport, like Neil Rogers, to buy the team. Huh? So if we can get 175 million people to donate me a dollar apiece, Neil Rogers uh, Inc. Holdings, whatever the hell you want to hold this, yeah. Let's say Neil buys the team. Then we'll go out there and get some goddamn good players. We'll bring back Frank Mahovlich. What do you say to that? All of those old guys that uh, Beefo's always talking about. We'll bring back Gump Worsley. How do you like that? Oh. They don't know who the hell these people are. They don't know who the players are we got now. They know Gump Worsley? No. No. They don't know the Gumper from the Humper, who, by the way, I understand yesterday, the Humper, <laughs> finally had a confessional that on the air. Funny. Yeah, he had a confessional on the air and admitted that it's become a gambling show and all these uh, all these boring terminal gambling. It's, it's like the uh, this morning I'm listening to the worst team for as long as I can stand it. 
And I hear a caller saying, well, uh, well what about that, you teal green? All they want to talk about is gentle green. And like Hank says, he ain't going to play. He hasn't played a game in three years. He's a piece of turd. He's even more fragile than Pavlov. Every time he farts again, he, he's out for six months. But what, what, the team is 7-1, and one, and only in this town are they worried about gentle green. And the same with these chronic uh, sports people, man, these gambling people. Well, uh, how come there's an eight-and-a-half-point spread on this game, uh, Humper? And how come, uh, you know... I mean, you you talk about terminal. I'd rather watch bass fishing for 600 hours than listen to these chronic gamblers call in and put us off and put us out of business. That's what you've done. You put me out of business just because I'm stuck in the middle of it. Look at this. I got one call on the board there. Even Robert shaking his head like, well, we get more calls in the middle of the night when we got a tape a network show coming. That's right. We get more calls than this to a show that you can't call in. We run tape shows. We get more calls than this. And the one call, by the way, is from Naples. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. I've got it. We're not all dead over here. We listen to you once in a while. Yeah. Hey, why don't you come to work every other day and just play commercials all the time and save you That's and... That's not a save... bad idea. We could play the commercials on alternate days, and then the other days we could have a show. That's, That's what I'd like idea. for you to do. they uh-huh. got so many damn commercials. Oh, it's, it's brutal. These people are grave robbers, these Beasleys. Well, all our... got to go over there and pick it outside their building and say, how much is enough? Well, I'd just love to save you a lot of time. You'd like to come in every other day, wouldn't you? I think once a week sounds good to me, the way things are going lately. Once a week sounds about max. Well, have a good day anyway. Okay, thanks so much. All right, bye-bye. Say hi to my good friends, the Beasleys. I'm real tight with them, you know. That's what I hear yesterday. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T line at line 9 that we just had that great call from Naples. He was okay. 877-785-NEAL. 877-785-6345. Eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five. Let's see right from the get go today whether we're finally going to break this streak or whether we're going to continue it like Joe, Jolt and Joe DiMaggio. Yeah, we might just go fifty six days in a row like this with like uh, desperate on the phone. We might just do it because this town has shriveled up and died. It just you can smell it. It's just that acrid <laughs> aroma in the air. You can smell it. Here's a mobile in Pompano. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes. Neil. Once we're the callers lately, you need people like me to call. Yeah. That's, that's that really you. I, you know, what's with Jimmy Johnson? The guy's a moron. Yeah, okay, thanks. Call the sports shows, okay? You sound like one of their people. We don't need you, sir. We don't need you. I'd rather talk to an empty goddamn board, which I am anyway right now. I'd rather talk to myself than people that sound like you. You're one of the sports nerds. Okay, here's our last chance, because I got news for you. I got my paycheck in my pocket today, and Robert could have a real easy day today. Because I could just play music. I'm prepared for that. I looked at my contract last night. Not that I'm upset about all these technical problems that they're having here and about the fact that we can't buy a goddamn call on the show anymore. I'm not upset about those things because, I, you know, I go with the flow. And it said, you know, they pay me to do a four-hour radio show every day. Not a talk show, a four-hour radio show. Prepare and present a four-hour radio show. That could be music. That could be Hungarian melodies. That could be Chinese melodies. That could be just about anything under the sun. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Davy. Hello. Hey Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, of course, who the hell's going to buy the Panthers if uh, he can't uh, enjoy the revenue from the concession stands? Beats me. Why would anybody pop it in their purse if they can't taste it? Beats me. That's right. Yeah, but have you ever tasted the stuff from those concession stands? <laughs> you don't want to taste it. I don't think so. No. Well, that's absurd. Okay, good point. Can't understand these callers either, by the way. Please don't tell me that the phone is that they're all going to phone like this in here today, because that's what they sound like so far. I was assured by our astute program director this morning, long before the beginning of the show, that these phones that they went through with a fine tooth comb and that they were all going to sound spectacular, like these people were sitting right in the next room. And so far, the caller phone will approve. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get nervous, but uh, so far I'm getting pretty goddamn nervous. Here's a mobile in Pompano. Hello. How are you, Neil? Okay, sir. Uh, did you know that the Dolphins have performed uh, exorcisms on their opponents the last few weeks? Meaning what? They got Damien, don't they? Okay. Here's the Royal Palm Beach. Hello. Royal Palm Beach. Neil. Yes, sir. Faggy. Maricon. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Like I said, Chinese melody sounds real good to me. Where are we going, Robert? Here's a mobile in Kendall. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Okay. Uh, last week I was driving around and I saw a bumper sticker. It said, atheism is the cheapest religion. Mm-hmm. Like that? No? No. No. Well, uh, let me ask you, 
Did you see that report by Ari Adzer last night? No. Did you hear about it, no? Report on what? He did a thing on uh, how there's about a million speeding tickets given each year, but about 50,000 of them are, are not, uh, they're dismissed because the cops don't even show up. Right. Why is he telling people that? I mean... That's how people get off speeding tickets and all, yeah? So what's wrong with that? Why should why should we get all these speeding tickets? Unless you're endangering other people's lives, unless you're going really, really, really fast, uh, then why is it anybody's business? Well, that's what Don't I'm we talking have more about. important? Is that what you want to pay your police to do, is set up radar traps, speed traps? Is that what you want? No, me? No, I'm saying why is he bothering giving a report like that? I mean, when I get a speeding ticket, I don't want the cops to show up, you know? No one does. Yeah. I mean, I go to court so that the cop doesn't show up. Okay, well, slow down. Oh my God! You see, they are they concerned about the Panthers? No. no, I'm telling you, I've been telling you this for years. There is no interest. That was that was all such a typical front running phony. It was like the Marlin World Series thing. Exactly the same thing. It was a one shot deal, and everybody jumped on the bandwagon. They had those banners hanging out the windows of their cars. They're driving up and down the road. They're doing their honky routine, honking the cohorn all over town. We love you, Pat. Come on, let's hear it. Yeah, we do. No, we don't. No, we don't. This is the phoniest goddamn mother scratch in town you'll ever find in your life, and don't you ever forget it. There is absolutely no interest, and that's the, that's the most pathetic part, is they keep lying about Bure may play, and he's going to go out there and practice for 30 seconds, and then take his pinky and run back into the room and do whatever he's doing, do somebody. And in the meantime, uh, nobody cares anyway. If they came on right now, if we had a call right now from the uh, from the uh, spokesman, and he said he's playing tonight for sure, there wouldn't be three extra people come out there tonight, would there? No. No. So what do you keep lying about, for Christ's sake? Leave that to us. That's what we have expertise at here at QAM. We're the lying experts. We invented it. 26 after 10 at 560 WQAM. Dolphins football. Sports Radio 560 QAM. Oh, God. Harry Callahan is back. And now, he's passing out flowers in airports. Hey, pal. Huh? You want to buy a carnation for your lady friend? Huh? Uh, no thanks. Come on, pal. Make my day. Uh, okay. Clint Eastwood is Dirty Harry Krishna. You know, in all this excitement... I don't know if I sold you six flowers or only five. But seeing as how Krishna is the most powerful being in the whole universe, and he blew all my hair clean off, you got to ask yourself one question. So what's that? Do you like my orange smock? Well, do you, punk? Clint Eastwood! It's just me, Smith and Wesson, and the Dalai Lama. It is Dirty Harry Krishna! <laughs> Now, chanting at an airport near you. 1032 at 560 WQM. I think I got the solution for all our problems. We're going to turn this into a hockey show. Oh. We can get it down to about a 0.1 share. We can get right in there with, with the babbling brook before the end of the year if we really work on it. <laughs> we put our heads together. <laughs> yeah, let's get Rimmer on here and do a couple more hockey shows. Come no. on. How did I ever survive those, you know? Just astonishing. There aren't six people. I keep saying 10, 20. There aren't six of us. Maybe the Kleinbergs and my friend Ron from Philly and me, and uh, that's about it. John don't care anymore. About four or five of us that care, and the rest of the people, bah, let's go fly fishing instead. Let's go check out some flies. Here's this Jesse Jackson crap, by the way, which has me very, very pissed off, because on the one hand, maybe he's got a pretty good point, because they just had this uh, riot at the game here just a couple nights ago right here in town, these farces. But, uh, you know, it's common. These things happen when you get a whole bunch of crazy kids together at a high school football game, and they get a little bit uh, all juiced up and all psychotic, and uh, somebody says some, starts talking trash, you know. But the only thing that really disturbs me about this thing in Decatur, Illinois, these expelled teenagers charged with felonies now, is not so much that they were charged with felonies, and they showed the videotape on CBS 6,000 times last night, so I'm sure some of you saw it. Now, when they show that little clip there, on the one hand, it looks really grotesque and like, you know, you notice the handful of white kids are all running for their lives like, oh, I'm getting out of here, which I can't blame them. But nevertheless, it looks pretty bad. But then Jesse says, well, it's only 17 seconds. No guns, no knives, no shootings, no stabbings, no drugs, but no whites. See, I wonder if those kids that were, you know, I wonder if the six kids who were expelled were all white. You think Jesse would be up there? No. In Decatur, Illinois, making a big grandstanding again? No. He says it's not race. He says it's about fairness, not about uh, race. Fairness. That's the issue. Don't you love the way he says that issue? 
I just love the way he'd be talking at the Jesse. He's something else. He's a crap. Just another grandstanding. I don't get it. So in other words, these kids who are riding and then jeopardizing the lives of the other people in those stands and creating a goddamn disturbance in a scene, and a school wants to make a stand on it, and evidently they examined the uh, the video replay, and they, they probably had the referee from the football game come in and look in the uh, video replay thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to start looking at brawls like that, too. You have two minutes to take a look at this and then uh, give us your decision. And the referee uh, stepped away, took his head out from under that little hood, little white hood. And he stepped away from that thing, and he says, hey, you Spartans, you're out. Oh, yeah, like that, like a baseball umpire. You're out, which is not, you know, not usually a football thing. But nevertheless, this is a little bit extraordinary. Jesse Jackson, is this a racial thing, or what is it, Jesse? If those kids were white kids that were expelled from the same school in the same goddamn city, if they were white, would Jesse Jackson be there? No. No. Absolutely, positively effing not. Everything is race. Every time somebody does something barbaric and unacceptable and grotesque, it's a racial issue. And he's always right there with his thumb on it, grandstanding for fun and profit. Here's Miramar. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Mother of God. Hey, sorry, I called you before you started talking about Jesse Jackson. Anything you like, pal. That's what this show is all about. Listen, I went we'll to... take anything these days. The way things are going the last seven or eight days, we'll take anything. If you want to sit there a little bit like that. Oh, Might man. be entertaining. I love your show so much. Everybody loves the show. They just got nothing to say anymore. That's the problem. I went to Las Vegas. Business, man. We're out of business. Yes, sir. I went to Las Vegas for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I got there, and this is a story of how Neil changed my life. Yeah. I got there uh, about 1 in the morning. The, only, the best place I could get was the Howard Johnson's right by the airport there. Mm. So I go into the room, and they had a little basket on the... Um, on the bathroom counter, mm -hmm. and I was going through it to see what was in the, yeah. in the basket head. So I put this uh, soap in the shower, and there was a little thing of lotion. It I puts the lotion in the basket. I picked yeah. it up, How and I, know? I put it back in the basket, and I got down. I said, my God, I just put the lotion in the basket. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, and I had a great time. Yeah. Okay. And that was, that was the highlight of your trip to Vegas? No, I, then I went to Harris. No, actually, Vegas was pretty cool, but I, I, I don't have nothing against gambling, but I don't know how to do it too much. Yeah. So they had a lot well, to you, do. Well, it's usually lucky schmucks like you that win a big jackpot. Hey, I, had my first in, I had my first international trip. Guess where it was? Milan. Milano? Yes, Milano. Lowe's. Well, yeah, there's not, it's not much of a tourist it's town. Like it's but just a little Havana on a bad day after a bomb blast. Hey, having never been to Italy, Milano. I... It was, hey. Oh, you were in Milan. I thought you went. Uh, I thought you said Madrid. Milan. Milan's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Guess it's what? Right. Speaking of bomb blasts, you know what they did? We're coming out of the hotel, and the police here say, "Get back in! Get back in!" Yeah. And uh, well, it turns out somebody left a briefcase out there, and there was nobody to claim it. The police blew it up. All right. Yeah. Was it was it the uh, carbonieri? Was it the uh, dark uh, suited police with the real black uh, outfits on? I. I think so. I don't remember. Maybe it was just La Bamba police. Okay, Tom, glad you had a good time at Howard Johnson's. There's one of our people, baby. He went to Vegas and he stayed at Howard Johnson. Oh! 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. 877-785-NEAL. 785-6345 on our Florida line. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Okay. You know, the problem with people like Jesse Jackson is you give these kind of people some power they will, if they had it their way, they would screw the white man, and they really would. I yeah. think I think they would make everything preferential treatment for their yeah, own. I, th I think that a lot of black people think it's okay for them to be racist because they, they're entitled to do it because of all the injustices of the past, that somehow that gives them the right to be racist and hate honkies, you know, well, which I'm not buying into that. I think that's a pile of crap. What they still don't understand is uh, every, everyone and every type of people have, have suffered some sort of racism or some sort of... Uh, uh, beatings or killings, and it's not just the blacks and why, why they get preferential treatment, I will never understand. Uh, the Jewish people, they've been hated throughout, throughout, throughout the beginning of time. Oh, yeah. Uh, ev everyone, I mean, Catholics, uh, it's just not the blacks and why they get a special cause and a special, I think it is because, you know what, the, the white man, I really believe this, is, is, is scared of the black man, so we'll, 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 no we'll kidding. pass, we'll pacify scared them. To death. And we'll give them their well, wealth. Like, like I said, those kids in the bleachers, man, they saw all these uh, crazy people start with this crap, and they ran like, you know, let me out of here, please. Well, I just think it's disgusting that these people still get preferential treatment, and people like Jesse Jackson. Who I mean, I, it looked like to me like it just turned into a jungle jam right there in the bleachers to me. Yeah, but you know what? They're all schwarzes, and that's how they act. 
Okay, there you go. See, there's another there's another uh, Jew with an attitude. J W A Jew with an attitude. Yeah. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five. Of course, he may have a point. Pound five sixty on the AT and T line. That Florida line, baby, is it smoking? No. That is a doornail. Eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five. 21 before 11 here at QAM. No portion of this broadcast may be reproduced without the express written permission of WQAM Beasley Reed Acquisition Court. Now with over 500 numbers to choose from, the Florida Lottery offers more ways for you to lose. Hello, I'm Bob Butterworth, and by now you're aware of my moral crusades against the evils of gambling and sex. And that's why I'm proud of the new Florida Lottery, because hopelessly agonizing over thousands of numbers might help discourage those of you who embrace the sin of gambling. And, of course, all proceeds do go towards education. <laughs> so scratch your bubbles and don't pick the balls with the BBs inside to win the all-new Florida Lottery. There's something fishy going on. Say, kids, what's real bad for you but tastes real good? Sugar! And what gives you the excess energy to drive Mom crazy? Sugar! So, what breakfast cereal will you tell Mom to buy next time she goes shopping? Sugar Shockers! Yay! Sugar Shockers! Two super sugar-coated sugar shockers are little bits of raw cane drenched in honey and coated with powdered sugar, glucose, fructose, corn syrup, and other natural sweeteners. And they taste just like sugar-coated sugar! Right, because there's no yucky vitamins or minerals to spoil your fun. Yeah! And how does it make you feel? Like I'm vibrating! <laughs> And mom the love sugar shockers too, cause inside every box there's a free bottle of new Flintstones chewable Valium. So try new super sugar coated sugar shockers from your friends at Irresponsible Foods. 10:45 at 5:60 WQM. So Greg Reed just told me. So anyway, 5670560. Just relax. Pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. And, of course, the out-of-town line. Look at that. Mobile in Orlando. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, do you think most of the audience is listening to Phil? What is it? Do you think most of the audience have, is listening to have, Phil? Do you have, like, a, a sock over there? Well, obviously, you're not. Yeah, over the Internet. Yeah. Oh, and over the Internet what? Yeah, I listen to you, too. Yeah, there you go. Well, maybe, yeah. they're, maybe they're listening to both. Maybe they have one in the right ear and one in the left ear. Maybe they haven't heard Harvey Weirman enough. I have no idea what it is. Do you think yeah. Do you think most of the audience is listening to Phil? Let's take a poll on that today, sir. You don't like him anymore? That, that's not the point. The point is I'm here to do my show, I, whether I like him or don't like him, okay? I'm here to do my show. Well, you I'm both are great. But, uh... We're both great, but uh, you have a good time with Phil, okay, in Orlando. Call, he calls me from Orlando with a sock over his phone. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Oh, these are this, see this line. This line it was supposed to be for the real world, not just for Florida. Oh my God! I've had twenty three years of talking to people in Florida already, and lately. So let's find out: Is everybody listening to Phil? If you're listening to Phil right now, call this number five six. What are you laughing about? They can still call me and listen to Phil at the same time if they want to hear those Harvey Weirman tapes again. You know, and Margaret, and those same six or seven brother Bob Green. You know, it's very funny the first four hundred times, and he's a good talent. But I'm sitting here like uh, trying to make a living. I'm not going to just sit here and roll over. Hey, Phil, you know, I already gave him a lot of publicity, a lot of promotion. He's already got an ad in the newspaper last Friday. I've been here for two years with these gigantic numbers, bringing in these people millions and millions of dollars. Do I have a newspaper ad? No. Do I have a goddamn billboard? No. Do I have a sandwich board on Lincoln Road Mall? No. Do we have anything? No. No. We got a general manager who just comes in here. I'm telling him the equipment is like uh, in the toilet again. He's going, yeah. what the heck? Yeah. He's going, lim, 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 lim. yeah, nice going, Greg. God, you do that so well because you got so much practice. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, did you uh, see Channel 10 News last night? I never watch Channel 10 News. It's against my religion. They did an expose on... Uh, I'm glad I'm working there. <laughs> on Dade County school administrators and yeah. their bogus degrees. Yes, sir. Uh, well, why should they be different from the lawyers, the doctors, the uh, broadcasters, everybody else in this town is bogus? Why should they be different? I know, I, I agree. It was bus drivers? It was unbelievable. Well, those fat your mamas driving on buses that are putting your kids' lives in jeopardy? Nobody cares about their kids. I don't understand this town. No, I know. It, it, it's, it's absolutely incredible. 
they they did a thing on the uh, deputy superintendent uh, right. and his uh, PhD. Yeah. The guy actually received credit towards his PhD for being a licensed real estate agent. Yeah. Well, that's close. <laughs> At least he's got some kind of a license anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe even has a driver's license. That's two out of three. Ain't bad. You got it. And, and you know, I mean, we uh, wonder why our kids are a bunch of morons. No, our kids are a bunch of morons. It's not because of those people. It's because the public here doesn't care about their kids. They couldn't give a flying crap less about education here. Every time they put a school tax proposal on a ballot, it goes down in flames. Every time we come on here and start screaming the out about kids who can't get fed lunch in school, about kids going to school in portable toilets, all this other stuff, nobody cares. They really want to hear about this. Well, it's because 90% of the population down here is uh, people yeah. over the age of uh, 99. Over the age of 100 and a bunch of babbling uh, trailer park trash, I guess. I have no idea who these people are here. I get out there on a highway on I-95 or on a turnpike. I look to my left. I look to my right, and I say, those people aren't my listeners. I mean, those people would never listen to my show. Those people aren't even, uh, they're not in the same uh, race. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not talking about color race. They're not of the same breed. Oh, I know. I know. What planet, what spaceship did they just hop off of? Well, good luck to us. Good luck, pal. See ya. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Our poll question today: Are you all listening to Phil? And is that why we can't buy any more calls on this show? That's what the guy in Orlando says, who's busy sticking his nose in there, even though he's listening to this show and calling me with a with a with a sock over it. Yeah, put a sock on it, pal. Oh, he's got a sock on it. I bet. We'll see you at the sock hop. Here's a Pompano. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. How you doing, Mr. Rogers? Okay, sir. Okay, I'm calling reference to the um, comment you was making about. To the what? The comments you were making about Jesse Jackson earlier. Yes. And I feel like the man, he's real powerful, and not just to the black community and the white community. He tried to reach out to touch everybody, anybody in the community. Well, when's the last time he went to a, to an all-white school where there was a situation like this and tried to get a bunch of all-white kids uh, off the hook? Sir? Hello. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm still here. I'm, okay. a, I'm asking you a question. Okay, okay. Uh, when, the, when the last time you did research about Jesse Jackson? I beg your pardon? When the last time did you, you just follow one, one story? It's a plenty of story with Jimmy Johnson. How about it's, when he went over there to Syria and got the goddamn uh, prisoners freed? How about that? They were white guys, weren't they? That, okay. Let's hear it for Jesse, baby. Oh! Here's my man. Hello? Get out of here. I don't like him, okay? I mean, some days he's okay, and then when he starts talking about Jaime Town again, you know, I start getting real nervous, you know. Oh, and then he's got the chutzpah to come on here and talk about discrimination against the fags and the Jews, and he's talking about Jaime Town. Oh, you know, I have to be a little bit suspect. I have to raise three eyebrows when I hear some Schwarzer come on and start talking about those people in Jaime Town. And then pretend he's this great uh, libertarian, this great uh, humanitarian, whatever the hell he is. He's an opportunist is what he is. He's an opportunist. He's a media whore is what he is. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hi, Neil. How are you doing today? Okay, sir. Uh, I caught your show a little bit uh, later than usual today. Did you talk about the situation with the labor in Port of Miami today? Have you heard about that? No, I have not. Um, well, yesterday they uh, all the truckers blocked the Port of Miami because it seems like oh, right. it seems like the unions now want to uh, make every trucker that goes into the port yeah. needs, to, needs to be a union driver. They need to be part of the union. And uh, they're basically, you know, this is a season in which uh, those of us in the industry know that uh, Christmas and all the coffee for Christmas moves now, and now they're trying to uh, just grind everything to a standstill, and they're trying to get more power in the union. I want to see what you thought about that or if what any other well, who's trying to get Who's trying to get more power? The unions are. They, they don't want. To, they don't want anyone that's a private trucker driving into the port of Miami. Don't they understand this is Florida? We don't give a crap about unions here. This is Florida. Tell them, well, no, tell them they better take a look at the map and see what it's shaped like, okay? And get the message. They brought the port to a stop, and, and uh, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Yesterday, they, had, they arrested like five truck drivers because they got pissed off, and they went ahead and they blocked off the port. They, they basically parked their trucks there and wouldn't let anyone in or out. Well, good. Don't let those cruise ship passengers in there. Then I'm all on your side, man. I'm all for you. <laughs> you have a good one. Give them the Mickey, baby. <laughs> All right. All right. That goddamn Mickey Harrison, that phony baloney. When is the hero going to start giving us editorials about that instead of exposés about the airport 20 years too late? What are they going to give us exposés on all the money that the Harrison, that their good partner in crime, is sucking out of the uh, county, huh? Sucking it out. When in doubt, he sucks it out. That's Mickey Harrison for you. He just plain sucks. You see that story about that Carnival cruise ship from September 20th where they had the fire? You didn't see that? Oh, that was lovely. 
Not to worry about. And he had they got this recorded announcement. Meantime, the person that made the announcement, he's long gone. He hauled ass. He, you know, he got on the goddamn uh, little rubber raft. He's gone. Don't panic. There's nothing to worry about. It's just a goddamn fire. That's all. Don't worry. You'll be okay. You're gonna die. Yeah. No refunds, by the way. Yeah, you people that go on these cruise ships, man, you need serious, you need mental help. What are you thinking about? That's a vacation? No. Going on a goddamn boat with a bunch of guys, smelly people? So you can go out there and get, uh, you know, 100 miles, and just like the one that went out there in that hurricane that time and vanished. I read, I read a whole article on that in New Yorker. Big article. Yeah, they just went out there in the middle. Oh, they tried to, you know, run run from the hurricane. Did they make it? No. no. Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Hey, there. how you doing? Okay, sir. First of all, that guy from Orlando sounded like uh, Jack Nicholson ordering French fries. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. I think uh, Rick put him up to it. I'll tell you. A couple of things. First of all, does Jesse Jackson even have a real job? No, no. Or he just walked. Uh, he's like the Bob Kunst of the black community. He never had a real job. Never worked an honest day in his life. I'm serious. Well, and, but you're forgetting he's a preacher, man. He's a minister. He helps people. He's a Baptist people. preacher. He had Jerry Falwell on his show on CNN this weekend, and they were kissing each other's uh, fat parts. Yeah, he'd be helping people. Yeah. Anyway, well, stick I, his nose. He's a he's a troublemaker. He's a professional rabble rouser. And stick you know, if they, if, the, if they want to charge those kids with felonies, they must have the evidence to do it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? No, no kidding. Yeah, this this be America. That's right. All this barbaric crap is going to have to stop now, whether it's white kids or Schwarzer kids or whoever the hell it is. We're not going to put up with it. Yeah, stop F&A, it. F&A, baby. Well, listen, last night I was flipping it in the channels, too. Yes, sir. And I put on ESPN, and Don King was on there. Oh, boy. Talk okay. about a bad Schwarzer man with a bad hairdo. Yeah, no kid. Woo! Listen to this statement. He only killed he one guy, you know, but anyway. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Listen to this statement. He killed First me. of all, he's made probably like $100 million more than me. Okay, yeah. I've never killed anybody. Yeah, and this is his statement. He says, um, "I was discriminated as soon as I came out of the womb. Yeah. I was discriminated against as Time soon as I came out of the okay. womb. Time to go into the wubber womb. Yeah, go oh, back to his womb. Yeah. Uh, have a good day, Neil. Okay, and back to you. Yep. That's what they say. Go back to your womb. It's just a fire. God damn it! You're not gonna drown. Maybe. Yeah." Sure, five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. If you're listening to the Phil Henry show right now on Stupid Talk, call us and tell us about it, and I'll feel real bad. Will I feel bad? No, no but nevertheless, you know what I'm saying. Are you sure? Positive. Guy from Orlando, rabble rouser, probably works for Cheap Channel, no doubt. Here's Pompano. Hello. Yes, sir, Mr. Rogers. Good morning, Peter. Yes, I am. Um, I'm a little bit upset that guy in Orlando called about Phil Henry. He kind of ruined my gig. I was gonna. Talk to you about Phil, but a couple things. How about uh, the Sun Sentinel and the Miami Herald and the standings in the National Hockey League? Again, how do they continually put the Southeastern Conference on top of the uh, the Eastern Division there? And it goes by alphabetical order, right? It always well, goes well, Atlantic. I mean, that, that's really nitpicking. If they if they could just get the information right, that would be that, good enough for me. That's very true. That's going to be the next question I was going to ask, Mr. Just Russo. Like I was getting raped in Fort Myers the other day. Who was on top? But anyway. Well, okay, but Mr. Russo has a has a uh, Mr. Russo. Yeah, uh, well, you mean Michael, that Pudwacker, Michael Russo. Yeah. yeah, he should have access Pudding to a lot Russo? more information and give it to us, and just not only the Florida Panthers. The Panthers right. aren't the only team in the National Hockey League. Yeah, only on Sundays they have that one big page because they have an sure. extra room. But other other than Sunday, they give you crap. They right, give you I go through the hockey news. What well, do you well, do? Let me ask you this: Why Her? why should they give you hockey information in a town where nobody cares about it? I do. Here's, do. A, front, here's a front page story: Heisinger's going to sell the team, and I can't get it. nobody cares. I do. Get rid of Heisinger. Nobody cares, man. All right. I'll well, see I'll see you. The other thing, wait a minute. So, yeah, the other thing about Jesse. Yeah. How about holding people responsible for their actions? Right. That's the black guy. or white. That's no, right. That's what Michael Jackson matter. said. I don't care if they're black or white. Fry their ass. Absolutely that's what little Michael correct. said. And my in closing, sir, I'll so let you go. If they're black or white, if they're cute, he'll do them. Yes. And. uh you're doing with the Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills coming up? You yeah. think you might be able to squeeze some of that burger bill? Blah, 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 you blah, got blah. it, baby. You Thank got you, it. Sir. You won't hear that on the goddamn Phil Henry show. Stick that in your <laughs> and uh, puff on it. God, finally, there's a little sign of life here all of a sudden. A guy from Orlando, I think, woke these bastards up a little bit. Well, we've been wondering where the hell you all were, you know. We've been wondering where you were the last seven or eight days. Maybe taking a long rip and winkle, which I couldn't blame you in this town because it's so goddamn boring here. Oh, God, is it boring or what? Uh-huh. 1057 and 560 QM. Ed Kaplan knows the scores. Starting at 10 till the last game ends. Weeknight, only on Sports Radio 560 QAM. Uh-huh. 
All right. Well, and Buffalo has a football team, the greatest in the land. And everybody thinks they're great, because they really are. The Buffalo Bills are the number one. See what I mean? So just sing along. When you say Miami. When you say Buffalo. And you hear that. Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills. They're the greatest team in the history of the human race. They're the Buffalo Bills. They're the greatest team since sliced bread and canned beer. Yeah, there you go. And you, and you jazz up that redneck stuff. They listen to that banjo. Holy sweet God, listen to that. When you say Buffalo Bills, it don't sound so rednecky, do it? Everybody sing along now. Are you Bill fans? Here we go. Well, the Buffalo Bills are the best team. They have the best record over the last five years. And they went to the Super Bowl four times, which is more than I can say for this scum sucking fish. And they're uh, the greatest. Because I really like their uniforms. They sure as hell beat the heck out of having a fish on the helmet. Because they're the uh, Buffalo Ho Bills. Okay. The best football team what I ever seen in the history of my life. They are the uh, Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills. The home of Jim Kelly, the greatest quarterback in the league. Yeah, everybody, the Buffalo Bills. They're the Buffalo Bills. And they've been around longer than the stinking rotten fish. Well, they're the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills. What would you rather have as a pet, a buffalo or a fish? What is a Buffalo Bill? 1103 at 560 WQM. And wouldn't it be really something if the Bills, by some miracle, actually won that game on Sunday? Uh Wow, that that would be bad. Wouldn't it? Would that be bad? No. That little Doug Flutie. Out. Who the hell were they playing last Sunday? It actually was a kind of interesting game for about five minutes. Who were they playing? Oh, the Redskins? Wow, what a Redskins blow. There was the owner of the Redskins, by the way, that paid $800 million for the franchise. He's about 10 years old, but he uh, you know, made a lot of money in uh, porno or something. And $800 million he paid for the team. He's up there watching his team just get decimated, and Flutie's running around, and he's faking guys. You see jockstraps laying all over the goddamn field because Doug Flutie is like evasive and elusive and uh, magical. How many people would like to have Doug Flutie as the quarterback on the Dolphins as opposed to Damon Heward? Not as opposed to Danny, boy. You've been ripping him off, okay, just because he's got those funny-looking lips. Ungrateful bastards. God, I, I just can't I can't get over that. I can't believe it. This man has broken every goddamn record except some old 78s. That's right. Every record you could imagine. His play has been magical. Has he ever really had a running game no. to play with? No. Has he ever had any real major big name running back? No. No. Has he ever had a guy named Barry Sanders no. or a uh, Thurman Thomas no. or a Emmett Smith? No. Nobody like that. Nobody of that caliber. That performance. And you know something? These people are forgetting he got injured on that third down play in the Colts game. He got bushwhacked, baby. He got slaughtered. That's where he got that goddamn pinched nerve in the neck. He almost got uh, killed. He still gets up. Gets the fourth down playoff and throws the touchdown to win the game. How many people would like to have seen him dragged off the field after third down? Let's put Damon in there now on fourth down and let him throw the touchdown pass to win the game. Anybody want to see that? No. I don't think so. Or maybe he'll run it in. Or maybe he'll just drop back and get sacked again for the 600th time. You know, see, you just, you know, you see what you want to see. You see what you want to see. See this? Here's the West Palm Beach. Hello. Neil, how are you today? Okay, sir. Hey, you know, about the schools, I'll tell you something. You'd be very happy to not have children, and George will back me up on this, dealing with anyone in the public school system. It's like going to Publix and getting the guy that watches over the produce on Sunday evenings yeah. and trying to ask him to rebag you some uh, grapes. Yeah. It's not going to happen. No. It's, it's sad to deal with anyone. Second point, of course the Bills will rule the Dolphins again this weekend because they own the Dolphins in the last 10 years. Well, well I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. Bill, uh, Bills are pretty weak. They're old. They're an old, old team, you know. Yeah, the Their Dolphins average age is 82 on that team. But the Dolphins have no heart. There's the difference. One question for you. What do you mean they have We're... no heart? They got a horseshoe up their ass this year. Plus, they got a they got a shot. They got a shot, baby. Absolutely. They could be really, really they special. Could be special. That's right. They got a shot. Neil, yeah, one question for you. Were you of course, still... he knows about shots because he hires the uh, all gangsters for the team anyway. He knows about gunshots. One question for nice. you. It's not too ponderous. Were you still in the Western New York area when the Dome Arena was open at Monroe County Fairgrounds? No. 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 The okay. what? The Dome, Dome Arena. Arena. The Dome Arena where? In Monroe County Fairgrounds. I never heard I, of it. 
you know, it's, uh, the Dome Arena for work. whom? For what? It was a arena where they had, they had concerts later on. They moved for a lot R. of R. lot of the Does home. RIT play there? I don't know if they play there now. But Spiritual for, High, do they play their games there? No, but Leroy High plays Canadigua there. Canadigua Elementary, I think, plays their games in there. You know what? And you, that's the home of the world's biggest douchebag, Jim Longany. What, what's that? It's the good friend and douchebag from Leroy, New York, Jim oh, Longany. Leroy, New York. I thought we were going to say Canandaigua. There are no douchebags in Canandaigua. Just a lot of farmers. And also, tell the man out there, the buffet is now open. Okay, thanks. Take care. The buffet is open, folks. Oi! 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line, 877-785-NEAL, 785-6345 on our Florida line. If you're listening to Phil Henry right now, call us immediately and uh, give us a report. Here's Plantation. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. How's it going? Okay. I um, just want to tell you a little story that was told to me about uh, Jesse, Je- Jesse Jackson. Yes, sir. I knew one of the guys that was one of the hostages um, that was taken over in Kuwait know, about 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And he was telling me that when they were flying out of Kuwait with Jesse, I think they were going to London, mm-hmm. he was very specific telling all the hostages that the first person coming off the plane is going to be me. Right. And I'm going to be holding this child. <laughs> and if you remember, well, what's wrong with that? I mean, talk about a photo opportunity. You're bringing back yeah. the hostages. You're the first one off the plane with a little uh, starving kid in your arms. How do you? What, what could be better than that? Yeah. Well, that's that was the prime importance of his trip going back. Is he wanted to be the first one off the plane right. holding the kid, right? To get all the publicity, forgetting about people. You know, they were. Yeah, but he's a Baptist minister. He wouldn't be a publicity hound, would he? Being a Baptist minister. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, I guess he would. Just like Jerry Fallball. Well, that's just another side of it. And uh, regarding your question about Phil, I've tried to listen to him at night, and it's just boring. Yeah. It's the same old stuff over and over again. Well, I mean, you know, I love Phil, but it's it's just the point is that I've tried two or three times, and uh, Harvey Wireman and and, uh, what's her name, Margaret Gray, and the Bob Green voice with another name to it. And, you know, what Phil does is is very entertaining at certain times, but when you only do like, when you can only do seven or eight voices, and it's the same ones all the time, once you're on to the act, I'm sure that he's going to be gigantic in the markets where they never heard him do this stuff before. But when we've heard it for uh, years already, uh, you know, it's it's kind of hard to keep it up, so to speak. And one one last thing. And who knows, maybe he'll kick ass. I have no idea. I wish him all the luck in the world, just not from uh, 10 to noon. One last thing, um, you know, I try to listen to Hank in, in the afternoon because it's very hey, stupid. Yeah, it's very convenient when you sign off at two o'clock. He comes on, right. and you know, I think sometimes he's entertaining when he's talking about football or baseball. But you know, last week he started with this Breeders' Cup oh, and going into the gambling. Yeah. Well, he admitted that yesterday that he realizes it because I've, I've been because I like Hank and I like his show when he's talking yes. when he's doing his thing. But when he starts getting sidetracked by these compulsive gamblers, it's like it's like it's like listening in on a GA meeting, you know. And here's all these compulsive gambling. Yeah. I, mean, I like to gamble too, but I'm just not going to talk about it yeah. on the air. It's not interesting. It's boring. Right. right. Shameless request. Yes, sir. Um, a couple of months ago, I heard the bit that you played. I think it was. Um, Richard Simmons in a sleepaway camp or something like that. Richard Simmons in a sleepaway camp? As, 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 as a counsel in a sleepaway camp? Okay, I'll look for him. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. Bye. Richie, come on, Richie. Five, six, seven. Come out, come out wherever you are, Richie. He won't come out. No, go back in. Like I said, Richie, we got enough embarrassments already. Please go back in. I'm praying. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. It's ten past eleven here at QAM. Wake up with the first team: Joe Rogan, Jeff DeForest, and Steve Goldstein. Weekday mornings at six only on Sports Radio five sixty QAM. At the point of the mill, Buffalo Bill talks. Oh. Having trouble falling asleep? Yeah, every night I try counting sheep, but they stink. Well, now you can relax with a new limited-time offer that stinks in a different way. It's the best of Al Gore. Al Gore? I want to be asleep, not comatose. <laughs> Shut up and listen to this. And we have this today because I created the Internet. Whoa. I'm feeling drowsy already. That's right. After just a few minutes of listening to Democratic presidential hopeful Al Gore, you'll forget what's bothering you and start thinking about who's bothering you. I love the environment because environmentally speaking, without an environment, the world would be a terrible environment in which to raise our children. I I can't keep... My eyes open. Yes, you'll drift off to the land of wink and blink and a nod as you subject yourself to the most uncharismatic public figure in the history of American politics. I have made an illegal phone call or two in my office, 
but at least I didn't have illicit sex in there. It's true. <laughs> Nothing puts me in the mood to be unconscious more than the vice I president. Oh, yeah. While well, I've been in office, <laughs> my wife... Don't suffer through another sleepless night. Get the best of Al Gore today, and tonight you'll be sleeping like a... <laughs> To order the best of Al Gore on CD and cassette, just call 1-800-It's 1116 at 560 WQAM. Here's a, a fax from Grace who says it's an abomination that Ray Whitney is not listed on the NHL All-Star ballot for the Panthers. Who picks this? A bunch of retards, Grace. She says, I can understand Pavel and Robert uh, Svelo, but Victor Kozlov, good point, sweetheart. Victor Kozlov couldn't stick it in an empty net in the puck either. Let's write his name in when he gets the all-star ballots there on Saturday night for the Buffalo game Saturday. And by the way, speaking of Buffalo and the Buffalo game, Fat Boy comes up here again this morning. Fat Boy, you know Jeff High? Waddle's in here this morning with copy for this. This is the fourth try, Fat Boy. Has he gotten one account on this show yet? No. No. Keeps bringing me copy for phantom accounts that don't exist, that don't pay any money, that, uh... Yeah, who knows what the hell's going on. Nice going again, Fat Boy. Keep sucking up those avails. They're paying me anyway. I don't care. Oh, that's a great story. I could tell you that, but I won't. Here's a fax from our friend Alan in the Keys who says they can't even get their lies straight, meaning the Panther organization. Yesterday on the worst team, Brian's brother said the doctors in Edmonton said it would be a tremendous risk for Brady to play with his fractured pinky. The Edmonton game was Wednesday night. This means they obviously knew immediately after the game about the pinky. If that were the case, why Friday, two days later, with the Vancouver papers filled with articles about Beret's return that night and how this is going to be the biggest Canucks game since the 94 series with the Rangers? It wasn't until Friday afternoon after the rarely filled GM place was sold out that they announced an X-ray had just revealed a broken finger and that Beret would not play. By the way, folks, no refunds. They all, I, I was told, I don't want to mention who told me, but they're lucky they didn't have riots there in Vancouver. There were a lot of very hostile, angry people. Does it make sense that the Panthers would wait till two day that they would wait two days to get around to X-raying a badly broken finger on their superstar? No. And the worst team just let it slide by, of course. Well, they don't know. And Geldy, he's busy ripping uh, Jigs McDonald. Poor old Jigs, baby. Underline the old part. Yeah, and Alan says, Pavel will play tonight and I'll be in goal, meaning him. Yeah, there's about as equal chance, I'd say, Alan. Thank you so much. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. We have about uh, 20% of our audience left. The rest of them are all listening, not to Phil, not to uh, that Smegma 103.5 with that disco music. They're all listening to those two live Jews on the fan. There you go. You know, I got the actual whole rating book. I left it at home. I should have brought it in again. Not only, I mean, they're not even listed. That's how they didn't, they don't exist. They don't exist. This was a front page story by the unctuous Barry Jackass, the same one who wrote about Wayne Hypinga on the Panthers today, by the way, so you have to kind of wonder. Front page story about Waffen, the first of a 45,000 part ass sucking series by Barry Jackass about this great competition that we got down the dial, 1900 on the dial. They didn't show it. That means they, there wasn't one diary. There wasn't anybody. Nobody was listening to them. To their amateur or sit down comedy. Maybe that's why all the salespeople over there are walking out and why nobody can get paid. You think that might have something to do with it? Because uh-huh. they have no audience? But they're all listening to those great, very entertaining two live Jews midday. That's what our sales department likes. Probably Todd Dreck is the one who likes those guys. You sure don't like this show. Here's Miami Springs. Hello. Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. About uh, Jesse Jackson, what everybody's forgetting is uh, 30 years ago, he did, he pulled the same shenanigans. He's constantly trying to get his mug in the camera. Mm-hmm. When Martin Luther King was shot, he wasn't even present when he got shot. He was in Memphis. And then he shows up on I, the I, thought, I thought he was up there on the balcony. Last he time was, I he, they show him on the balcony. He wasn't standing next to him, and he shows up all of a sudden on the camera giving interviews with blood all over. He wasn't, Martin Luther got, King got shot when he came out of his hotel room. He wasn't in the hotel room right. with Jesse Jackson. or else If Jesse Jackson Jesse, was standing next he, to him, he, they he probably would have shot be there. him. Jesse be there. I've seen it a million times. No, he's I know. There. He's there after the fact, but he's not he there. after the fact. He must, have, he must have made it over there pretty oh, quick. Oh, they were they were all staying in the same hotel in the right. Lorraine Motel. Right. But he shows up. The word goes out. Martin Luther King's not staying in the room. I used to live in Memphis. In yeah, but the, wouldn't you think that if if you were part of an entourage and the main man got shot, that you'd be a right? Yeah, right. You run right over there, but right. he wasn't standing there. He shows up in the interview like he was standing right next. Trust me, if he was standing there, they would have shot both of them. Yeah. So that's well, all I, I got. Was small potatoes back then. That's all I got. Okay, you. thanks. Anybody know what he's trying to say? No. No. I mean, I've seen. Haven't you seen that footage a million times there, where they keep recreating it? And James, Earl, how's James Earl Ray doing, by the way? Anybody spoken to him lately? No, he ain't doing too good. That's our poll question today. Who shot Cock Robin? 
Oh, yeah, but, you know, Jesus was nailed up there on the cross. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, and my name is uh, Cock Robin, too. We're just playing Robin, as in Batman and. Maybe we ought to do a D&A test on Jesse. Find out if he's really human or not. Because he's got, you know how his mouth kind of like sags down? Like maybe he had a bad stroke or something like that. Maybe he's been stroking it. Here's a mobile in uh, Palm Beach. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, how you doing, Neil? I'm doing First okay. time call. I love your show. All right. Transplant to, to your state about four months ago. All right. You know what I want to talk about is, you know how in the news you always hear about these poor single-parent kids in the ghetto, how they can't make it and yeah. they can't do this? It's always the father that's missing, too, you know. Yeah, no, let, no me tell you, around. let me tell you a story. A lot of vernacular grew, conceptions in the ghetto. Yeah, let me tell you this. I grew up in, in, the, in the South Bronx. I'm a poor, oh, eight kids, geez. eight kids, right? Yeah. Seven of them have master's degrees or doctors. Right. Right. I'm the only. I'm the only one with a with a BS, but I I, I own my own business. <laughs> and that's and my specialty too. Figures. That's my specialty BS. Yeah. And you know what? These I, they keep. Why don't they show in the news the positive things? I had kids around me. A Martinez kid is a doctor in New York City. The Singleton kid is a, is a, has a PhD. Why don't they show the positive things about what? About kids growing in a city that they still can make it. You know? Yeah. All they show about is the, the failures. What about if they show these these kids some of the positive things? Some of the kids that came from the yeah, same some environment. Yeah, outstanding people that came from the ghetto who made a lot of money, like uh, OJ. Oh man, there's a good example. Yeah, but that's uh, he's trash. Yeah. I'm talking about the typical decent you know, people, homeowner, worker, right, and what have you, and, and they don't show that, and I, I think that's a shame. Everything's a negative, the negative. Well, you can be whatever you want to be. I know it sounds very corny, but I mean, if you want to be a scumbag, it's real easy. It's a cop out. But if you want to be uh, like a, you know, you can be whatever the hell you want to be. And I think if uh, and we if got a lot of hard, bees around. Yeah, if you can be, if you work hard, this country is still open, even for the kids in the street. There you go. Thanks a lot, All right. pal. All right, bye. I'll see you in the Bronx. Five six seven. I'll see you in the scooter in the Bronx. Won't we be there? No, no, we won't be there. But nevertheless, those Yankees, man, <laughs> to them, boy. Five six. Sorry, well, that's because Joe Costello's not here today. I can say that he'd be very upset and he'd start playing auto racing sounds. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Our poll question today: What do you like better, auto racing, bass fishing, or uh, horse racing? You like any of those? No. Got my uh, bass, my fishing, oh my fly fishing calendar. I'm squeezing this tight. I'm not letting this go. Three hundred sixty five days of fly fishing by Tom Rosenbauer. Sounds Jewish to me. What's a Jewish guy doing fly fishing anyway, huh? It's for Goyim, it's not for Jews. Jews don't go fly fishing, do they? No. That's for old, crusty Goyim from New England. Go fly fishing. You know those old, crusty New Englanders that all talk like, you know, like that one guy in the, uh, what's the, what's the commercial he does? Grandpa, there with lemonade. Grandpa's only 29, he's been drinking too much of that goddamn lemonade. He don't look too good. Yeah, that's true. That country time. Man, that country time sure is good. Grandpa's only 18, but. Five six seven oh five. Some other some crazy stuff swimming around in that stuff. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. I must be in a really good mood today because it's payday. Oh! That's the only reason I show up here, baby. I show up and Robert's all excited. He got his check in change. Here's Miami. Hello, Miami. Going once. Twenty eight minutes and eleven seconds, and they crapped out after waiting almost a half an hour. How do you like that? I'm on the wrong line. That's okay. Here's a mobile in the somewhere. What, what line am I on? Miami. Miami. Yes, sir. Hey, Neil. I'm lost. I need a road map. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, belated, buddy. Thank you. Listen, uh, had, did you hear the, the headlines on the affirmative action disappearing? Did I hear the headlines on affirmative What does that mean? Yeah, Jeb, Jeb Bush got rid of affirmative action. Jeb Bush didn't get rid of affirmative action. Well, he's Jeb the one Bush who announced is, He's it. busy pandering now. Don't you understand? He's pandering to try to cover up for the fact that he's going to destroy public education as we know it. Well, affirmative action is uh, a way to uh, say bye-bye. Affirmative Parker. action blows. We all, exactly. Anybody with a brain agrees on that. But there's, uh-huh. a difference, there's a difference between being against affirmative action and being in favor of destroying all the uh, worst schools that need to help the most. There's a big I difference. Agree. I agree. I agree with you. 100%. This governor is an elitist snob, just like his brother, born with a silver spoon in his mouth, who never worked an honest day in his life. Underline the honest part. Well, at least the county uh, will be able to give the white man a chance back instead of seven to one uh, farces and sticks and everything. Well, white man to, a chance to do what? To flip burgers to at McDonald's? Get a county contract job yeah. or get a county contract. No, uh, not, not unless you know the mayor, man. You're dreaming. 
Oh, come on. Yeah, you better get to know Mayor Pinga. Then you'll... Oh, by the way, what were they saying on the news about the uh, Egypt? Uh, they... I mean, this is going to go on for years now, just like the TWA jet that crashed, about those two Pingas on the uh, floor of the ocean. I would think that our Cuban friends out there would be, like, really up in arms about hearing two Pingas <laughs> on the ocean floor. What the hell is that all about? Sounds pornographic to me. Five six seven oh five sixty. We got sixty or seventy open lines now. All you people are listening to the two live Jews on uh, seventeen hundred. Please call us right away. Give us a report. How are those guys doing? Come on. I hear they're very entertaining. That's what Todd Dreck is running around saying on the second floor, along with Screwan, our sales manager, who's saying, "Yeah." It's uh, eleven twenty six at QAM. This is five sixty QAM. Only one South Florida radio station has the hat. Hey, 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 Stop it. Weekday afternoons at 2, Sports Radio 560, QAM. Neil Rogers got. Say, kids, what's real bad for you, but tastes real good? Sugar! What gives you the excess energy to drive mom crazy? Sugar! So, what breakfast cereal will you tell mom to buy next time she goes shopping? Sugar! Soon, super sugar-coated sugar shockers are little bits of raw cane drenched in honey and coated with powdered sugar, glucose, fructose, corn syrup, and other natural sweeteners. And they just like sugar-coated sugar! Right, because there's no yucky vitamins or minerals to spoil your fun. Yeah! And how does it make you feel? Like I'm vibrating! And moms love sugar shockers too, because inside every box there's a free bottle of new Flintstones chewable Valium. So try new super sugar coated sugar shockers from your friends at Irresponsible Foods. Okay, so that, uh, that bit starts right there. Robert says to me, didn't we already play that? He's got this look on his face, and I said, ah, maybe we did. See, Greg Reed was in here going, pop, 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 like I'm trying to do a radio show, see? And so I had a punch because the other bit was ending whatever the hell I played, that uh, lotto thing from Broker Brian. And so I punched whatever was over here, and I have no idea what the hell it was. So we played it twice. Oh! Twice the Sugar Shockers for the price of one, okay? I apologize profusely. It's Greg Reed's fault, okay? See, he can't talk to me before the show. He can't talk to me after the show. He always barges in here with that same look. Of, hey, how's it going? With that big smile on his face like he's oblivious, you know? And believe me, he is. Uh -huh. He's oblivious. Hey, Greg, we just had a, a bomb scare in here. We had a forest fire. There's uh, The equipment don't work, and we're off the air. Hey, did you hear about the... Uh... That's Greg, Mr. Oblivious. Just call him. Yeah. Here's North Miami. Hello. Good morning, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, put me down for auto race fan on your uh, survey this morning. Auto racing as opposed to basketball. Oh, horse basketball. Racing ba well, I, I like horse racing, but I, I'm not a gambler. I, mean, yeah. I like going to the track. I'm watching horses. Well, we, got, we, got, we got enough gamblers exactly. calling the other day part. I, I tell you what, Hank, Hank did show. a great job. He finally admitted that that show yeah. was so terminal with those people calling up. Right. I mean, like you said, I love listening to him. When right. He's, but when he's talking to him about the odds and uh, did they cover it and tell me about the Dubuque-Iowa Waterloo game. I mean, what is that? It's come to the point where I, I'm even going over to that Jim Barry. I mean, how oh, bad can that oh be? Oh, my God. Did you hear that, Hank? This guy's listening to Jim Barry. He's the one. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> and he's admitting it. Absolutely, because I can't stand it. I mean, gambling wow. talk, you degenerate. No, see, I, I listen to Hank going home every day, and I yeah. enjoy it, but as soon as that gambling crap starts, I push the CD right in that thing, and I, and I never come back. That's it till I get home. Well, I know everybody on your station. I mean, Joe's the only one. Costello, I listen to him every morning religiously on Saturday at 6 o'clock. I'm always an early riser. Yeah. The kid's doing pretty good. He's a drag racer like me, you know, and... uh that's, that's the yeah, best see, report. He came in and dragged yesterday morning, as a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of embarrassed for him. Listen, I wanted to touch up with uh, Jesse, like Jesse Jackson deal. I hope that school board, Decatur, uh, Illinois, they better stick by their guns. Because you know something? I just, I've been living in North Miami all my life. Wow. Okay, I'm, I'm 42 years old. I went to North Miami Junior High School. North yes, North Junior High School. I have kids in, in school now. Unfortunately... I have to send my kids to Catholic schools, which kills me because I can't stand those boys. Yeah. But I can't send them to North yeah, Miami I don't, I don't High School. I understand. I mean, I, you know, if I had kids, I'd be very, I would uh, be terrified of sending them to public school. I mean, school. I, I, I spend over eight hundred dollars a month. What I can do with eight eight hundred dollars a month is, you know, it just kills me to spend that kind of money. Right. Well, it, and and I, you know, they they have to do something because it started thirty years ago when I was a kid. 
You know, uh, yeah, but, no, but nobody here cares. Well, you, no, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him care. You know what I'm saying? You can't make him lick. Well, all right, have a good one. And back to you. Bye-bye. Five six seven oh five. By the way, Greg, this overhead is kind of screwed up. I just what it comes and goes. It's up and it's down. I don't want to say our equipment sucks in here. By the way, to our engineering department who aren't responsible for it because they they can't come up with the bucks to replace it with something that really works. And Greg's walking around looking like uh, yeah. Oh, phone is phone working again, right? This phone, yeah. Take the phone and uh, stick it up your ass. Yeah, stick it where the moon don't shine, Greg. Okay. And quit walking in here with a big smile on your face, asking me how things are going while there's goddamn flames all the way up to the ceiling. Of course, most of them were on that picture of the sales department, and I'm the one that set the fire. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. If you're listening right now to Smegma one hundred three point five and that hot disco music, please call us. Ned will explain to us what happened these last seven or eight days. They were getting really insecure here at QAM. Maybe it's those bad, bad long commercial breaks uh-huh. that we got on this station that are chasing everybody away. I think that uh-huh. could be it. The fact that their greed, greed, the Beasley Greed Corporation is chasing the audience away in droves. Of course, I'm hearing about other people's commercial breaks to make ours look like pikers. Is what I'm hearing. Could be a rumor. Here's a uh, payphone in Lake Worth. Hello. Hey, Neil. It's John in Lake Worth. How you doing, John? Pretty good. How you doing? Great. Hey, first off, I got to let you know, I know yesterday was the day from hell to oh. you, but I got to let you know, uh, the last two or three hours of your show was one of the best shows. I was laughing so hard the you got to be kidding me. They, they almost took me out of here on a stretcher. When you were day. doing the uh, feedback from that, that telephone throughout the uh, commercials yeah. and whatnot, I was just hysterical. Well, what can you do, you know? Nah, well, you got to yeah. go with what you got. That's all we had. Hey, are you, our rag paper up here did not report anything on the sale of the Panthers this morning. Well, I it's think... right on the front page. Barry Jackass again, who continues, which, of course, makes you really wonder if it's true. But nevertheless, high You know pay. what? The hell with them. Let them sell it. Oh, I, I agree. I'm yeah. ecstatic. I'm, I'm, in fact, when I go in the arena tonight, I'm going to be dancing in the halls. I'm going to do a Kazatsky in there. But yeah, I'm going to be tiptoeing through the tulips in the arena. You know, I'm so glad. Just to say goodbye to his ugly ass. And I'll tell you what. Bye, hope, Wayne. I bye, hope, bye, Baldy. As soon as the, uh, if it does go through, if there is any validity to it, uh, management's going to go. I'm, Murray, he's going to be out of there because, quite frankly, I was I was totally shocked that they even resigned him. Yeah. La- for this year, I was like, mm-hmm. "What are you kidding me? After the last two years, you're going to resign him again?" Well, he, he I don't think he signed a new deal. I think this is his last year. I think. Well, this he is signed a, a, a one year extension, I believe. He, and he I extended didn't think- it. No, I think I think this was his last year. Well, but, but you got to understand, they can can him at any time. I mean, coaches and GMs come and go like underwear, you know. Yeah. Listen, uh, thanks to you, I am now uh, a DSS owner. Hey, and by the way, I'm glad you reminded me about that. The grass saw it again on the news last night right. to prove that I wasn't dreaming of reading that fax yesterday. The good news is we can say goodbye to cable just in a matter of days, if that thing is true. Uh, just in a few days, they're going to have our local channels on the DSS on your small dish, and you can tell your uh, cable company to pick it up your ass. Right. That's to open up competition is why they're doing that. I and, love uh, it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's a great thing because who, I, in their, who in their right mind would want cable where the picture is some days it's great, some days it's marginal, and the selection is whatever the hell they want to give you. When you can have the small dish, you got every sporting event under the sun. you got you have your local channels on there. You get all the news channels. You get 8 million music channels. I know, I Everything know. Everything under the sun is on there. And the picture, is you could reach in there and tickle their fancy. Hey, listen, one, one more thing before I go. Uh, you know... Are you aware that Senator McCain, okay, he tried to pass that campaign finance reform? Right. All right. If there's one thing that everybody in America should be talking about is what that man tried to do, okay? Because if you think about it, all right, all of the things that you sit and you harp on that are true to your heart, okay, yeah. like tobacco and, and, and um, just anything, all the ills of America – that, yeah, that, that these poli- exactly all of that. Okay, if you had campaign finance reform, you took away the soft money, you took away all of the donations yeah. that the politicians are allowed to have. You put everybody on. But, but, but what are you saying that John McCain deserves credit for that? No, 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 no. He's what a I'm total saying, phony. He's taking the special no, 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 interest no, money get, out there in Arizona. Don't get me wrong. I'm okay. not saying he deserves credit for that. Yeah. I'm saying the issue of campaign finance reform. But it's, it's never going to happen. If, I realize that. Happen. Let me finish. My point is. What's your point, if, John? if this country had campaign finance reform, yeah. okay, if these politicians yes. were not allowed to take soft money, all you, of these things, you yeah. would no longer have them catering and kowtowing to the NRA. You would have prescription drugs that weren't through the roof. You wouldn't have these doctors charging exorbitant prices. You wouldn't have this BS with the cable and the satellite. Yeah. All of these things, these politicians, no all, longer, of these things. all of these things, they That's would it. no longer have an interest in that. Right. Okay, calm down, John. You going to the game? Yeah, I'll be there. What's
the uh, prediction for the score. I, I don't do that. Call up Hank. He'll tell you. I love you. Okay, see you. Bye. Are they going to cover? What do you think? They're going to cover no. they're playing a girls' team. They're going to come on. Pavlov might play. You think Pavlov's going to play? No. No chance, by the way. He ain't playing. I hope they don't get pissed off over me there and take away my uh, Panther jersey, whatever the hell they gave me. I mean, they've been very nice to me, but I'm not going to sit here and lie for the organization, okay? I'd like to get as many people out there as possible. I work feverishly, endlessly for people to come out and learn the great sport of hockey. It's wonderful. You'll have Ray Whitney out there and Mark Parrish and a few other guys that can really play the game. And Atlanta's got Lulu on their team, and they got Lulu, what's his name? And Yeah. You know something? I'm one of the biggest hockey fans in the world. And if I were pressed right now to tell you, is Dusty Rhodes is the goalie, right? See, I'm saying they're like Robert knows. He, yeah, whatever you say is a you know, shade of purple right now. That's yeah, Damian Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes. Damian Rhodes, former Maple Leaf, former Ottawa Senator. Dusty Rhodes in goal. They got, um, uh, I don't know. They got Gordon Garp. The, the world according to Garp. And they got uh, the Moon Man. They got uh, uh, from uh, Edmonton. What the hell is his name? Buchberger. Kelly Buckberger. Well, you say Buchberger. I say Buckberger. I say uh, Buckham. They got people that nobody ever heard of before. Okay, that's the Atlanta Trashers. So we ought to beat the crap out of them. If you're one of those front-running phonies, we ought to score about 10 goals today, even without Pavlov and his uh, crappy little thing that's crooked. Yeah, he can't play tonight. His thing is crooked, okay? It's sticking off to the side and his finger, too. 20 till noon at QAM. This is 560 QAM. Jim Mandich talks sports. All right. And right here on Sports Radio 560 QAM. Oh, God, Neil. He's got a garlic reason that he ever sorted a line of cocaine. He said that it's not true that he ever used cocaine. Georgia lies when he denies that he tried cocaine. What the Republican can say in an attempt to save his campaign? He said he's pure as a saint and he would never play with cocaine. George denies when he denies that he tried cocaine. It's 1145 at 560 WQM. We got Hanky in the studio today. And then we got uh, the Booster, Big Fat Booster, 6 to 7. We got the uh, pregame at 7 again tonight, 735 from the Macarena. The Atlanta Thrashers and the Florida Panthers. Ed Kaplan will give you the odds on the game when it's over after the game. Uh, two faxes from uh, Scott Marcus in Boston. Scott's one of our regular faxers and listeners up there on the Internet. And Scott's on the Atkins, okay? Scott is on the Atkins and wants me to tell him a, a song and dance about what he should order from Delights in Boca. Call him up, okay? Here you go, Scott. Because what am I going to tell him? What do I know what he likes? Call up and talk to Alan. He'll talk to you. one eight seven seven low carb L-O-W-C-A-R-B. Call him up toll free and uh, chew the fat and uh, chew on this, Scott. Thank you. one eight seven seven low carb L-O-W-C-A-R-B. Our number is 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. we got that Florida line waiting on you, 877-785-6345. We're talking about why Jesse Jackson hates Jews. Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Hey, Neil. How are you today? Okay, sir. First of all, on the uh, poll question. And why black people hate Dan Marino. Yes, sir. I uh, vote for bass fishing. Yeah. I. Uh, why do you sound like it's your speed? Yeah. Well, listen. Sound like I... it's right up your alley. Well, listen, you know what? Uh, it gives the Broward Sheriff's Office something to do up there because, you know, if there's one thing they do, they don't stop crime. They kick everybody out fishing at any lake. Any lake you go to, the sheriff will show up. You rob a, you know, if you steal a car, there's a guy fishing. They'll go after the fisherman yeah. first. Yeah, if you extend your pull, they generally show up pretty quick yeah. in Broward. Hey, I got a, I got a question. Jenny's bag is guys with their pull stuck out. But anyway. I got a question for you. Yes, sir. How come they have uh, religion at the Dolphin Games? Oh, I've been talking about that. You're, it's, you're, you're flapping your wings, pal. No, nobody, uh, they're a bunch of sheep. But, 
you know, there, I, are a bunch, there are a bunch of sheep. I refuse to stand for the invocation when I used to go to the games, paying my own way for five years in a row when I was season ticket holder. And uh, maybe three or four of the rest of us did the same. And the rest of the people, they do it because they're told to do it. It's crap. It's totally inappropriate. They don't, it's they don't have crap. That. They don't have that at other games, do they? Only in the National Football League, sir, because the NFL does everything its own goddamn way. And nobody else on this station, by the way, has got the balls to get on here and say, let's cut that crap out of there. It's totally inappropriate. People of all denominations are coming here. We don't have to have some Getsky out there in the field giving some Jesus prayer or some mumbo jumbo when we paid big bucks to go see a football game. Well, you know, it, 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 I say it's time to get God out of the goddamn NFL. <laughs> That's right. Let him go into the goddamn schools and save those kids. Everybody's screaming, well, since they took the Lord out of the school, well, let him go back into school and let's get him out of the NFL stadiums. I, God damn it. I couldn't agree with you more. And God Neil. bless you. Thank you. He likes bass fishing. You understand what we're saying? Uh -huh. he, he admitted it. Five six seven oh five sixty. If you're listening right now to uh, Power ninety six, please call and we'll get you some help. You think we got anybody that listens to Power ninety six who listens to this show? No, no. I love Bo Griffin. She's my buddy. Bo Griffin. She's the best. She is a sweetheart, and she's loaded too, by the way. But nevertheless, and who else do we like over there? Kid Curry. He gave me those Backstreet Boys tickets. You're okay in our book, kid. Even though Anna Squeed did have that big fat ass and those gigantic pazumas. He's all right. He's a good guy. He means well. He's a little surly some days, but then again, he works. Uh, he's a he's a manager. He's a ma he's one of our eighty five managers we got here at Beasley Reed. Here's Homestead. Hello. Hey Neil, what's up? This Hi. this text from BFE. I got a couple jokes for you. Okay, great. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Hey Neil. Good morning. Yes, sir. Not too bad of calls today for a, for a Wednesday. Not bad. We're making action. You know, since the guy called from Orlando who suggested that my entire audience is listening to Phil Henry tapes over there on uh, whatever that is, uh, all of a sudden these people woke up again. I actually, think they, must, they must be getting nervous that I'm uh, going to get the hell out of here in a couple of days, which I'm <laughs> thinking about. Actually, I was going to mention that to you. But let me just say on your informal poll, so to speak, on the three things that you mentioned, yes. my vote is none of the above. None of the people driving around and around on a track, no right. bass fishing, no golf, yeah. none of those terminal, 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 terminal. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, as far as 1700 goes, I never heard that station until you mentioned it, mm -hmm. so I switched over. I like over to promote just... everybody, man. I like to give everybody a shot. We yeah, have a well, shot. Let me tell you something. I, I turned over there, and they're actually interviewing a wrestler like it's real, like it's real sport, all about his upcoming matches and what, oh, what he's no. going to do. They're interviewing wrestlers. Mm. It's bad enough that they're interviewing the Des Moines Wahoos or whatever, but they're doing the wrestling. Yeah. Great. The last thing, and I'm out of material, is Phil. Um, I've always admired Phil. I think he's he's great for what Are he you does. Sure? He's wonderful. Yeah. But what you you said the exact thing, and I know you're you're trying to be, uh, you know, diplomatic about it because he's he's a friend, I think, and he's talented. Well, he is a good friend, and he is a good talent. But but I mean, see, let me say this to you: I could listen to Phil at night from the ten to whenever I go to bed. You know, I, I listened to one night he was doing Margaret again. Yeah, and I, I listened for about five minutes, and I thought, well, you know, if, if people never heard this before, I'm sure it's very amusing the first, you know, 400 times. But I've heard all of that before. I've heard Margaret till she's coming out of my ears, and you know, he's picked a very difficult thing to sustain. You know, he's got a great act; it's very unique. But to be able to sustain that and to make those seven or eight voices sustain it over a long period of time, uh, it doesn't work for me. And you know what? You're absolutely right. And and I think you know, in this generation of kind of MTV quick cuts, I don't know how people can sit through a 12-minute bit, a 15-minute bit of the same person talking. And, and I wonder where they do get the people that keep calling, that don't understand it's a put-on. I mean, yeah. how many people? Well, 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 well you've answered but, that. But, but that's what's, uh, I mean, that's the, the secret to success is that there's so many stupid. I mean, Phil's success is based on stupid people. You know, on people that just don't get it. It's incredible. And, and that even if he comes on and announces that it's a fake and he's doing phony voices, that there are still going to be. And of course, now that he's on all these other stations that he's syndicated, he can't miss them. And as far as that's concerned, he's never going to be sitting there begging for dumb people to call in and get outraged at what his uh, phony characters are saying. So that, right, that's right. a great asset for him. Exactly. And he, by the way, he does have a couple of new sticks. He apparently has a new microphone. Uh, you know, you could always kind of tell it's a Phil thing if you have any brains at all. Yeah. But yeah. but now he's actually got some kind of little little microphone situation there where he's got some new things going. Right. But it yeah, is like the a same voice, deal. Uh, shredder kind of thing. It is, and he's got some new ones I've never heard. It's past Margaret and past the other ones, and, he, and they're pretty good. But but by and large, I mean, really, after 12 or 15 minutes of fooling somebody, move on to the next jerk and don't drag it out forever and ever and ever. You know. Anyway, good day to you. I'm glad you're in a good mood today. Okay. Thanks. All right, man. <laughs> He's glad I'm in a good...
He's blessed. I'm in a good mood. Well, you know, if I get more than two calls in four hours, I'm generally, I'm, you know, I'm easy. It doesn't take a lot to please me. But, you know, like I've told you before, and I know you're tired of hearing it, and I'm tired of saying it. 23 years, it didn't make any difference. It's got nothing to do with who else is on the air. It's just a, 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 a byproduct of this town. I mean, I can't make people care about things that they don't care about. They care about bass fishing. Hockey? Oh, what's that? And I realize that in America, it's a very, like, you know, a 1.7 on Fox. Bass fishing gets a 2.5 rating, and uh, hockey gets a 1.7. That's not a commentary on the sport. It's a commentary on the people here. Bass fishing, rednecks. I'm not talking about people who like to go out and enjoy fishing. I'm talking about people who would watch it. Oh, God, look at the size of that one. Yeah, I've said that a couple of times. I generally run. Here's a mobile implantation. Hello. Hey, Neil, how's it going today? Okay, sir. Hey, I just got a good, uh, I met Don Shule last week, and he was a very, very nice guy, and he, uh, he got to sign my autograph, and after he signed it, I, uh, I kind of told him, I said, we really got a shot. Yeah. Not to be so, and he, he just cracked up laughing. Thanks, honey. Yeah, he really, he laughed? Yeah, he was laughing. You, you do realize that he and Jimmy hate each other like poison. You do understand that. I have, yeah. to, I have to laugh when people call up Hank and say, well, is Shula, you know, involved? How much is he involved in the day-to-day -day operation? Does he go over there and hang out? I mean, none, absolutely zero. I mean, he was uh, moved out, and Jimmy set him up for the big fall and opened up a big mouth, you know, and they hate each other like poison. I'm sure, I'm sure that in in some part of his mind, if not at the front of the mind, that Shula is uh, rooting against the Dolphins feverishly and hoping they lose every goddamn game just to show up Jimmy and show what a phony he is. I know Jimmy's Jimmy's a jerk. I don't know. Don Shula's the greatest. Hey, can I get a couple? Were you fudge packing for Jimmy? Okay. <laughs> he wants not one. He wants a couple of money like that. Well, that's my buddy out there. He's obsessed with that because he's. Were you fudge packing? Were you fudge packing? Five six seven oh five. One more time, Ron. Were you fudge packing? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a call in West Palm Beach. Hello. West Palm. On the line that we're paying for, and they're not there. Oh my God! How is it possible? How can there be so many? Like, like I said before, how can there be so many stupid people out there? We get this line special for these people. You know what I'm saying? You follow what I'm saying? Uh -huh. We get this line special for these clowns, and then they still don't hang on. Well, you know, uh, the dog just had bad <laughs> diarrhea in the carpet, something like that. You know, his goldfish just dropped a big one. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line at Florida line. Someday, by the way, maybe someday somebody in programming will tell me when that line's going to be uh, like nationwide, like I keep being lied to and told it's going to be uh, a week from Sukkis, but they just don't tell me which year. God. They, they just, I mean, don't confuse them with the stuff like broadcasting. The only things that Greg Reed wants to talk to you about are all this other spurious stuff that's like on the periphery, on the fringes, that has nothing to do with the day out, uh, day in and day out nuts and bolts of, of being on the air. And you want to know why? Because he doesn't know anything about the day in and day out uh, nuts and bolts about being on the air. And I won't mention what Robert told me before because Robert's working for $2.75 an hour. He don't want to lose the job. So I won't mention about the fact that we went off the air 50 times during the Hurricanes game, and Greg Reed was standing in the back going, yeah. like that. Oh, gee, how come? After the 15th time, how come we're off the air? <laughs> like that. Yeah, these monitors, by the way, are just, uh, there's something going on here, Tommy. What are we going to do about this, Tommy? Well, I, I know you have nothing to do with that, but you just happen to be standing there, and poor Robert, he's still red in the face from my playing Sugar Shockers twice. He's all uh, psychotic about that. I'll tell you one thing. If I had 100,000 people like him out there, if I had 10 million people, all I'd do is say hello, and he's laughing his ass off. Robert, that's right. I just came out and said, hey, it's 10 Ah, <laughs> He's like red in the face. He's in hysterics. That's right. Even now he's starting to snigger. He don't even know what the hell I'm saying, but uh, he's starting to snigger a little bit. Snigger rhymes with chigger, as in chigger in the woodpile. Not you, Defoe. Oh, yeah, him? Here's Sunrise. Hello. Sunrise. Hello. Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, hey, I heard you make a comment about the cable companies and these uh, mini satellite dishes. Yes, sir. Where did you get that information from? Because I'm a mini dish owner, and these cable companies, you know, they can kiss my backside. Well, you can say goodbye to them in just a few days because yesterday uh, the FCC okayed it, and Congress is going to pass it. It's a done deal within a couple of days. And then uh, and any day now you're going to be able to get your local channels in the top 50 or 60 markets, which, of course, includes us on your small dish. Ah, fantastic. And you can say goodbye to the cable company. You can fire their ass. I don't have them now. I got my dish. I got an antenna. And you can say goodbye to your antenna. Uh, thank God. Take care, Neil. Okay. There's Bye. a good news for you, boy. All you uh, small dish lovers like me, just say, Bafangul to the cable company, okay, <laughs> to you guys. All right? Yeah, all those hot shots that thought that they had a monopoly all that time, and they did for a while. 
and they have those spots on there about, oh, well, you know, the dish, it costs you this. Yeah, to you guys. You got the dish, you watch whatever the hell you want, not just what your cable company decides you want to watch. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line, 877-785. And by the way, it's nice to see Wayne's also selling his interest in sports channels. Oh. It's going. Four minutes till noon at QAM. The sports leader. We love the leader. Sports Radio 560. QAM. <laughs> There was an old farmer who lived on a rock. He sat in the meadow just shaking his fist at some boys who were down by the creek. Their feet in the water, their hands on their marbles and clay things, and at half past four, there came a young lady. She looked like a pretty young creature. She sat on the grass. She pulled up her dress, and she showed them her rumbles and laces and white fluffy duck. She said she was learning a new way to bring up her children so they would not spit. While the boys in the barnyard were shoveling refuse and litter from yesterday's hunt. While the girl in the meadow was rubbing her eyes at the fellow down by the dock. He looked like a man with a sizable home in the country with a big fence out front. If he asked her politely, she'd show him her little pet dog who was subject to fits. And maybe she'd let him grab hold of her small tender hands with a movement so quick. And then she'd bend over and suck on his candy so tasty made of butterscotch. And then he spread whipped cream all over her cookies that she had left out on her shelf. If you think this is dirty, you can go f*** yourself. All right. 502 at 560 WQAM. I'll tell you one thing. We sure got a lot of calls today with Robert working on the board. The last two days with Joe Costello working. Boy, it was really, really uh, pretty grim. How you doing, Joe? Hey, Neil. How's it going? I, I hear you're Costello. not missing me. This Joe is getting so famous now. He's on television. He's got his. Uh, he's on at night. He's on Saturday morning. He's at some big uh, thing that he's calling in to plug now. Someday I'll be able to say, I once knew Joe Costello. The funny thing is, my wallet isn't getting any fatter this way. Yeah, exactly. We're down here at the Outback Steakhouse on Kendall Drive. How would your thing go last night before you tell me about the Outback uh, on Comcast that I missed? It went pretty well. Uh, you know, NASCAR talk. We had some callers into the TV show, which never happened. Really? Uh, yeah. You probably was, uh, had more calls last night on your TV show than we had yesterday and Monday. I doubt it. One or two. I doubt it. We did okay. It was a good deal, and, and I don't have a lot of experience on television, but uh, we're getting there. Yeah. So maybe in six or seven years, I'll be as good as Rick Sanchez. There you go. Maybe not. Anyway, the deal here is we've got free lunches to give out at the Outback Steakhouse. All right. On Kendall Drive. First come, first serve deal, and you can meet NASCAR driver Tony Stewart, who drives for Coach Joe Gibbs. Well, what do, what do you mean free lunches? Free lunch for everybody? First come, first serve. People who come to the Outback Steakhouse on Kendall Drive in the town and country shops will yeah. get to come in. They'll get to eat a fat steak, get an autograph from Tony Stewart, ask him some questions, raffles for great prizes. It's a really good deal. It's so, a, a good deal. It's an unbelievable. I don't. I, you have to be making this up, aren't you? No, you know, no, every everybody that comes in now that says they heard about it here for and they uh, whatever, uh, they're going to get lunch free. That's correct. It's a first come, first serve basis. They're oh like, my God! They'll be coming from Hallandale. They'll be coming from Tamarack. There'll be, uh, there'll be there'll be bus loads there by twelve thirty, Joe. We're doing it, baby, and we're going to have NASCAR Rookie of the Year Tony Stewart as well. Yeah. And he's, oh, a, he's and a great by, guy. By the way, Jeff Gordon, which I already knew this, but remember the call we had about him yesterday, and is he this, is he that? He's also a born-again fanatic. You did, you knew that. I, I knew that, but I had forgotten about that because most people are always asking, is he one of those? But, I mean, uh, he's a, he, he's like uh, he's like the, uh, uh, what's his name, the uh, big sponsor from the Packers, the um, uh, Reggie, White. Reggie White. Well, I'm trying to get his name out of my well, mind. He's like the Reggie White of uh, auto driving. You've auto seen racing, the, auto the television racing. commercial, the whole guy. Yeah, I saw it, that's why I saw it yesterday, and it brought, it back, brought back my memory again. Him, like Andy, crap. Andy Pettit from the Yankees is one, too. Oh, my God. And you're still a Yankee fan? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm well, listen, for it. that's neither here nor there. We're giving out a bunch of free lunches. Do you want me to bring you something? <laughs> no, please. i got to go to Mommy's today. It's steak. No, no carbs? No, thanks. 
All right. Well, we're here, and thank you, you won't for have any, You won't have any left over anyway. You're gonna, they're going to be really sorry they did this. Uh, here they come now. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time, Neil. Thanks for making the call. Later. See you, Joe. Joe Costello's down there at the Outback in Kendall, and they're giving away free lunch. Oh, are they are they crazy? Uh-huh. Are they out of their minds? Man, they must they must be related to somebody. You know who they must be related to? I must be crazy. I must be nuts. Yeah, him. Okay, let's get back to whatever we're doing here today. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Our uh, poll question today is: What other shows are you listening to instead of this one, like right now? Here's Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes. My pinky's broken. I can't drop the puck. Mm-hmm. What are we going to do about that, Neil? What are we going to do about it? I don't know. This uh, our overhead. What are we going to do about this equipment? That's a piece of crap. It's a piece of turd. Where's Kathy Lee when I need that bitch? At least all the radio stations you work at are all consistent. They all suck. Oh, no, not special. not like this. This is special. This one has got a special place in my heart. I mean, are the engineers there worse than boy? Yes. Really. Hey, I want to talk to you about this uh, Wayne, uh, his, his new stunt now, selling the team. And, you know, he's blaming that the Panthers are dragging down the stock that's mm-hmm. changed symbols. Yeah, the, the stock that was five. supposed to be Florida Panthers yeah, stock. Right. All, there you've got Boca Resort. Well, all these other, who, who's he kidding? This guy is unbelievable. And I just want to know, how, if, if Pavel, if he's making what, whatever, how many million? Eight things? million this year. Average million, million, million year. for five years, yeah. I mean, I, I was all hopped up a few months ago, but, you know, I'm looking at this like... It's get, it's getting really old. It's getting stale, and we're getting tired of it. And, and I realize that, you know, the finger is sticking out, it's sideways. But this guy has turned into be like a China doll with us, and every time he gets out there... I mean, what's the greatest number of games he's played in a row Seven, without said. getting injured? Seven. A handful, you know. Yeah, it's nothing. A small handful, and, and which I could have provided. Right. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Hey, I got another thing I want to talk to you about. Uh, I had some damage to my house from that Irene, that bitch. Yes, sir. And uh, I just want to, you know, my fence got blown down, and I have a pool, and, uh, you know, they're, everybody's behind, you know, they, you know, they're getting swamped with work and insurance claims. And the city of Pembroke Pines, they come by yesterday and cite me, and I'm like, what do you want me to do? I said, give me an extra three grand, I'll tell the feds got to come out tomorrow. What do you want me to do? So for my neighbor to complain, I'm going to kick your fucking ass next time I see you. Okay. Jackass. Okay. A little upset, and rightfully so. Now, is this, uh, I, this, this, you know, is, again, a technical disaster, and Greg Reed is running around a building. Little, little, did you hear this? Move a little bit like that. Don't you understand, mister? This studio is effed up. Don't you get it? Don't you understand no. the phone, the speakers, the overhead, and they say, and stuff like changes by itself. Just magically, from one minute to another minute, from one hour to the next hour. It's a piece of turd. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line on our Florida line it's eight seven 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 eight five Neil eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five. Here's Coral Gables. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, you know you you know uh, Paul Casanova. Do I know him? Yeah, you yeah. heard of him? Yeah, I heard of him. Yeah. Uh, I saw on satellite the other day that he's a fudge packer. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Pack this. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five. Not even uh, twelve thirty yet. They're already running out of material. Just when we had a little hopes up here, we actually had some activity here. We were smoking for a couple of hours, and you know what happens when you smoke for a couple of hours? You pass out. You go off in the corner and you go to sleep. Here's San Francisco. Hello. Neil, my queen. Good morning from San Francisco. Yes, sir. Um, two things have prompted me to call. Um, I'm a DirecTV Center Ice Charter member. The first year it was out, I had to have it. Mm-hmm. So I lied to my DirecTV company yeah. and told them I couldn't get my local network. Yeah. To, just to get the networks on that they should not play with rabbit ears and tinfoil. Right. Um, right away, I started to get letters from my local CBS affiliate, and then we get the letter that CBS and Fox have joined together right. to file suit. Right. So we scratched our heads for about 30 seconds to figure out why it's the NFL. They don't want you to see out-of-market games unless you buy Sunday ticket. Why mm-hmm. else would CBS and Fox get together? Mm-hmm. Only because they covered football. And the other thing that really prompted me to call, um, about Wayne Huizenga, Mr. Pied Piper, I was there He's the an first, asshole. Yeah. I was there the first day at spring training. In, in, um, up in Vero Beach, the very first day the Marlins ever took the field as a team, he came in his helicopter late. Big entrance. Where's Walt Weiss, my million dollar shortstop? I want to see him. Comes in like the Pied Piper. Mm-hmm. I remember the nice thing they threw at the arena, the, the, uh, uniform unveiling for the Panthers. 
Well, we probably have that puck. Um, he just loves to jerk people's change, loves to see the glow in their eyes, and then goodbye. Yeah. There's nothing that made me more happy to read that Auto Nation severely underestimated used car reconditioning uh, costs. All right. And they're losing some serious money on every unit that they're putting down the road. Oh, great. Excellent. Thanks for the good news. Oh, sir. Shameless request. Yes, sir. My life dealing in San Francisco sounds like the Chinese restaurant. Okay. Could you please play that? Okay. Thanks, man. See ya. Say hi to Alex and Tony Bennett. It's a 10 past noon at 560 WQM. Depot's Sony Sports Showdown. Are you up to the challenge? Saturday mornings at 8, only on Sports Radio 560 QAM. Join the NRA to start guns today. Have yourself some down home Christian fun. Oh, right. Blow your friends away. We'll back you all the way. Defending your right to own a gun. When you think of all the benefits you're getting, life will be sweeter when you pack your heater. You carry a license to be deadly. Come on and join today. It's the American way to be a member of the NRA. Aim for the meat, aim for the chest, and always aim for the head. In case they're wearing the best, sharpen your skills, feel more fun. They will be there to defend your right to all the stars. Come on and join today, and you'll be proud to say you're a member of the NRA. Twelve sixteen at five sixty WQM. I'm telling you something. I'm, I'm actually gonna, I'm going to get a hatchet. I'm going to get a hatchet. I'm going to take that amplifier for these overheads, for these speakers. I'm going to bust them up on the air right here on this show. What kind of a place? What every day? They finally got the phone fixed, at least temporarily for today. Now we got a new deal. Now the amplifiers, they're up, they're down, they're in, they're out, they're around. They're like, they're loud, they're soft, they're, they're all over the place. Have we got engineers here or what? No. Do we have an engineering department like you've never seen? No. Oh, my God. And the, 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 what I really appreciate is the tremendous amount of involvement. You know, like when, uh, what's his name? The uh, fat, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Julio? I don't even know what his name is. Julio. What is it? Julio. Like I said, Fat Julio. When he went in there and he like uh, uh, squatted down on the floor there for like about five seconds, and that was it. And he waddled out, and that's uh, that's it. Okay, that'll take care of that faggot for today. Now let's get on to the important stuff. Let's get on to that sports stuff so we can get, you know, get that hurricane game, at least half of it on the air anyway before we go off the air 20 or 30 times. I mean, before you run around a building, Greg, with all these grandiose stories like you're telling me, at least start putting together, like, like take the goddamn bandages and the paper and the glue and the mache and the stuff out of here and make like a real radio station first. Can you do it? No. No. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I was wondering, did that uh, that case that had to do with the uh, Fox and CBS, did that have anything to do with the big dishes also or just yes. the small ones? Yes, both. Both of them? Yes, sir. Oh, that's fantastic. And I wanted to uh, ask and that's for why the good news is now that, uh, now that we got the new ruling, they can both stick it right up their ass. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. I got I had a big dish for a long time, and I got, I got kind of upset when that ruling came by. Yeah. Hey, uh, I wanted to ask for a shameless request. Uh, can you do Sofa King? I'll work on it. Thank you, sir. And have a great day. Did that guy have anything to say? No. No. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line and the out of town line. Believe it or not, can you believe it? The expensive out of town line that we had to practically threaten to kill somebody to get. Yeah, that one is sitting there dead as a doornail. Eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five. Eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five. That's a nice easy number to remember, isn't it? No. No. What is it? What is it? Eight. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. How are you? Greetings from the uh, living and breathing in Kendall. Yeah. Uh, instead of a... You're only eating jo- free meals and lunch today. Uh, free lunches in Kendall, I guess. Y- yeah, I-, I was wondering about that. Instead of sending Joe Costello to Kendall, uh, is there any plans for you to come make an appearance in Kendall? No. No. All right. No, but this Saturday we'll be down there pretty close in the Gables at uh, Specs on uh, South Dixie. Oh. oh, yeah, the one across from UM, right? Right. It's noon to 2 this Saturday. Okay. That should be so- close enough. I mean, you could walk there in five minutes from Kendall. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's true. But I wouldn't. Uh, so now with this thing with the FCC, now 
once Congress uh, sends it through, yeah, it's a done, uh, it's evidently a done deal. There's no, there's no debate. Okay, so but then uh, days. How long they they we... said last night a matter of days, and you'll wow. be able to get your uh, local channels right there on your small dish. Good, then we can stick to cable companies. You can call the cable belong. company and say bye bye. <laughs> Won't that be a great day? All right. So, and what is Joe Costello doing in Kendall? Anybody he can, I guess. <laughs> All Have a right, day, pal. Thanks. He said he's got some juicy meat down there in Kendall is what he said. Is that what he said? Uh-huh. 5670560, oh, pound 560. Come on, let's hear more about Jesse Jackson and those rockish farces there. You know, it's very interesting the way this thing has gone these last, this last week. It used to be, and of course I was looking in the Arbitron in the full summer book. We have a much higher percentage of black listeners on this station as a whole, that's with an H, than we do Hispanic listeners. Now, in this show, it's, uh, the, the, yeah, the percentage is higher, but not necessarily the actual number of people. But, and, and part of the reason for being, of course, that our black listeners out there, the black men's, they be into footballs and the basketballs and all them balls, you know? They like that stuff. And they also got a sense of humor and they, uh, you know, like being called a Schwarzer, which beats nigger any day of the week. But, uh, you know, but I asked the other day, like, the thing about them, and this week, starting this week, they're like, oh, they've also disappeared. They've gone into hiding. They're out there, but they've gone into hiding. I mean, do you have to be embarrassed if you're black and you hate Dan Marino just because he's a white guy who's pretty good, who's very good? Why won't you admit it? I mean, yeah, I'd be probably too embarrassed to call into a radio show, just like the white people are too embarrassed every time I talk about the way white people feel about some black people. And I have to be the one to sit here and say it because most of these other people here are afraid somebody will recognize their goddamn voice. They're intimidated. They're easily intimidated. What's wrong with speaking it the way it is? If you don't like Danny Boy, and if you'd like to rather have maybe uh, Freddie Solomon in their quarterback, you want to bring him back? Oh! There you go. Come on, Freddie. Nice Jewish boy, Freddie Solomon. Probably related to me, as a matter of fact. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, what? I owe you a big apology. For what? Man, I tell you what, I've been listening. I actually started listening to you when I moved down here a couple of years ago. Yes. And, and uh, you hated me like poison. Uh, you know what? I thought you were the biggest asshole I'd ever met. Right. And I, I, I quit I mean, you listening. about one or two others, yeah. And you know what? Then I started. Uh, then I then I lived here for a year and a half. Uh, okay. <laughs> there you go. That was good. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I needed that good laugh, especially after these speakers are starting to fall apart. Just when we thought we might have a show here today, that nothing was falling apart on. Is that ever going to happen? No. No. I guess they figure it's a part of the show, you know. If it's not the phone, it's the goddamn overhead speakers, it's uh, the uh, something, you know, DCS. And just wait, by the way, it's November the 10th. I wonder if our crack engineering staff has gotten with the people that, because I know for a fact, I know for a fact that about two months ago, our chief engineer decided in his, his wisdom to change the date on his computer down here to make it back to like 1890, something like that, the last century. So that would have changed. It would be uh, whatever. And then, of course, nothing would queue up. Screwed up the whole goddamn thing. And poor little George had to crawl around on hands and knees on the floor with computer uh, crap for about a half an hour to get it refixed again. But wouldn't you think you'd get on the phone with the manufacturer and say, okay, how do we diddle this? Or is there some software that goes with it to make sure we can uh, don't lose our stuff when the year 2000 comes? You think he's done that? No. And I realized that he's under a lot of duress. I couldn't care less. That's his problem. Everybody here's got an excuse. Well, I got to do this, and I got to go over and kiss, and kiss Bob McKay on the forehead, and his uh, wig keeps falling off, all this other crap. We don't care about that. We care about us. Wouldn't it be nice to work somewhere where they actually cared about us? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a lady in West Palm Beach. Hello. Hello there. I'm really confused. I was thought- about. I thought the topic was um the topic? What, what station do you listen to when you don't listen to you? The topic is anything you want, but I mean you state- Oh, I just heard you state a topic and I just stumbled upon you and uh you're very interesting sounding and so I was just calling to participate, but then I heard you talk about No, Jesse no you Jackson. talk about whatever you like, sweetheart. This is America and, and as oh. long as long as I'm interested in what you have to say, you can say oh. it. As soon as I start getting bored, then you'll hear something that sounds very much like a dial tone. Okay, well I would like to say something about Jesse Jackson. Please. I'm very concerned because I, lo- I love Jesse Jackson, but I'm afraid he's going to turn this into a racial issue. He already because- has. He already has. He well, I think it's going to get worse, but I think the whole issue is adults getting involved in what kids are doing and trying to make a big deal out of absolutely nothing. Do I don't know. I-, I hate to sound like a soccer mom or something like that. I mean, I do have a break. Absolutely nothing? 
Well, I mean, I wouldn't I say it was absolutely nothing. I, I, I would agree that you know, two-year suspension uh, is is ridiculous, or two years, uh, whatever they're getting is, is outrageous. However, oh, but there's no way they were going to stick with that. They were going to they were going to come to their senses after a while. We didn't really need for this to happen. It didn't yeah. need to be turned into but, this. But, I mean, but, but what is he doing there? I don't know. Yes, no, I don't do. get it. Yes, you do. He's he's exploiting it. You well, know, I, you know, he always shows up when there's something like this going on. When the Haitians are all pissed off down here, he's down here. It's, yeah, he, but he's, he's, he's doing he, it for himself. He's not doing anything for any. That fair. is absolutely correct. He said it's an issue of fairness, not an issue of race. He's full of crap. He's like, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, the uh, the OJ attorney. Well, I would, I wish you would just read... I put all these people out of my uh, Jones. I wish you would just read Green Eggs and Ham. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Cochran Jones. I can't even think of his name anymore. I've, I've blocked some of those people out of my mind, maybe because it has to do with O.J. But anyway, you were saying? <laughs> I think she feels that I wasn't listening to what it was. I listening? No. She's okay. She was good. Just like Chris Darden said. I don't give a shit anymore. That's right. Johnny Cochran, I, his name just slipped right from my memory. Good. Nice. That's a good step in the right direction, Neil. Oh! Thank you. Now, what did she say? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. We got Hank coming up at two. We got the Boogster at six, and then from seven o'clock till uh, well, the pregame is at seven with Geldy. And will Geldy stop picking on poor Jigs McDonald? I know you want his job, Geldy. Stop sucking up to him to his face and ripping him an ass behind his back, okay, Geldy? And on the air too, just because he's a doddering old man, he's a great guy. He can't help but the fact that his uh, play-by-play is so bad. He's a good guy. And then Randy Moore, who used to be a good guy, but is now kind of like a laughing, like a clown. Yeah, are we going to start playing that clown music behind the broadcast? Uh-huh. Yeah, we're going to work on that. Might get a bigger cheer. 26 past noon at 560 WQM. This is the most disgusting program. Yes. I urge everyone to complain to this station. This is London to Spell with Don L. I'll be Don L. Jackson, and today we're going to spell the word broken. Spell it with me now. Broken. B-R-O-K-E-N. Now, let's use it in a sentence. So I says to the coach, I says, man, that broken show throw a football. This is Lona to spell with Don L. I'll be Don L. Jackson. All right. 131 at 560 WQM, your illiterate station for the 90s. That's why we're so popular. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. And the Florida line, it's vacant, it's dormant, it's docile at the moment. It's sitting there, it's dying over there. Uh, 877-785-NEAL. I sure love our friends over there in Fort Myers. They've used that a lot, haven't they? No. That 800 line? No. One of these days, though, when it gets to be national in about six or seven years, it's going to be big. That thing will be smoking. 877-785-6345. Here's a mobile in uh, Delray Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. How are you today? Great. Uh, great show. I, uh, I, I kind of got to gr- agree with the guy that was on here earlier, and I wouldn't listen to you for the longest time. Everybody kept telling me that uh, you were great, but mm-hmm. i tell you what, once you get us hooked, you, you got us hooked. Definitely so. an acquired taste. Anybody that thinks if you listen to the show one time, and that's uh, that's that's never going to work. Yeah, it's like Dom Perignon. You know? Right, exactly. you, you got to work up to it. Mm-hmm. Um, listen, uh, I, I think <laughs> I think on the other end of that uh, that you're talking about, uh, um Jesse Jackson, I think he probably has got new wheels for his soapboxes. He's just kind of traveling and uh, doing more things. If he would only get on uh, some of the things that uh, all of us are interested in, he may, you know, as he is a, a great orator, um, or I think he thinks that way, yeah, um, sure. he, uh, he he might be able to do some good for a lot more people if he would uh, just start doing that. So, well, um, But he can't just do that because this is his nature. He's an exploiter. Yeah. He's a user. He he just he, he's an opportunist. Every time there's some explosive situation coming along that involves race, he's always there to try to exp- uh, you know make it into a big song and a dance and to exploit it and get everybody marching and protesting. In the meantime, four kids, 46 kids who were expelled, uh, were charged with mob action, which is a felony. Sure. And, and, and this woman that just called, by the way, from West Palm, says, oh, I don't want to sound like a soccer mom. The implication being that the riots at soccer games are just guys having fun. I mean, you've seen, I'm sure, all you know, the riots that they have in Europe where people get trampled and they die. It's bar, it's barbaric crap. It's unacceptable. Sure. sure. And, you know, it, you know, it happens in Weston. It happens in, you know, all the, all the great places and whatever. Is he coming down here to Weston and start talking, you know, to those that, people? That's my point. If all those kids up there in uh, in uh, Decatur, Illinois, if they were white kids, he wouldn't have been within 500 sure. miles of there. Sure. And here we are, like I said, in Weston, they're all white kids. You right. Know, or well, most he, of them. He ain't going to be showing up there anytime. <laughs> no, no, he's not going to show up there at all. Uh, listen, I, the other question, I think this might be redundant, but um, 
the uh, on the satellite dish, I was kind of reading on the internet this morning, and uh, I looked to see if I was going to be able to still get like the West Coast. Is that? Uh, can you clarify that for me? What, or, what do you mean get the West Coast? Well, you always got like uh, something on this coast, and you always got something on the West Coast. An ABC affiliate here, and an ABC excuse me, ABC affiliate in the um, in, on the West Coast. Is that still going to hold true or no? Well, I mean, if, if you're able to get it, you're, still, you're not going to lose anything. Well, I lost if, if, it. So huh? I lost it. So I'm right, you lost it, but you should, it you should be able to get it back now because, oh. I mean, if, if you're all, if you're, in other words, if they make a deal, see, they have to make a deal with all of these local channels. And if they're not able to make deals with them, then those channels may disappear. But you can be sure that they're going to make deals because it's in their interest to do it. But oh, if they sure. do, if they do that, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to see the other things. I wouldn't think. But yeah, who knows? You, yeah, know. Was, you know, I, I read the bill this morning on the internet, and uh, it was a little early. And maybe uh, to, if they put it in layman's terms, we'd all be able to understand it. Exactly. That, that, that's why Congress is the way it is. But so. at least it's a good step. It's a way for everybody to say goodbye to their cable company. Well, that's the reason I bought the dish. So you, you got it. So okay. I have a great day, pal. Thanks. You too. Bye. Yeah. Hey, you cable people, stick it. Don't take it personally, like the people that work for the cable company. We don't hold it against you. Everybody's got to have a job. It's just that uh, we don't like your bosses. Okay. It's like here. We're not too fond of the bosses here, are we? No. No. We're embarrassed by them. We're embarrassed and humiliated by their indifference and their lack of uh, professionalism when it comes to the industry that they're making their living in called broadcasting, which they know nothing about. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Hey Greg, forget all the other hoopla. Forget the hullabaloo. Let's get down to business. Let's get some people in here. It's been eight freaking months now, and get this studio, everything in it, work into a T. You remember that state of the art studio I was promised two and a half years ago? No. No. He's got a short memory. Here's a mobile in the, and guess what? You aren't going to be on the air. You're not going to be on the air. This is a lunatic who calls George every day, every day between 10 and noon. Oh, Phil's in a break now. Phil's going off now. We don't care, okay? We're here doing our show. We don't care, Woody. In addition to which, it should be painfully obvious now, we don't want to speak to you. If they want to put you on a Hank show as Steve from Hollywood every day, that, that you call between 2 and 2.30 to make sure I hear it on the way home, I don't really care. It doesn't influence me at all. It's bad radio because to put chronic callers on here all the time, as some of the people do on this station, it's bad radio. I'd rather hear the gambling calls than hear Woody on the air, and I'd rather croak than hear those gambling calls again. So that should show you, Woody, where you stand on the Richter scale, like way down there on the ass end. 567 pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay. That's awesome. You take that guy out in like five well, I mean, minutes. He's been calling for a hundred years. <laughs> you said, Neil, you're great. And, and, then, then, he, then, he, then he paused, like, am I going to hang up on him now and dump it, or am I going to give him like two more words and dump it? Unbelievable. And I, none of it got on anyway, so what difference does it make? He, he's an idiot. He's another no-life schmuck. <laughs> five words. Hey, uh, Neil, um, what do you think about the prices at the National Car Rental Center for seats? The prices for seats are ridiculous, and the prices for food are unacceptable. The food blows, and they've raised the prices on everything in that place. And it's and, and now you see Wayne's going to say, well, I don't care because I'm selling the team anyway. You'll have to uh, take that up with the new owner, with the county, with whoever's in charge of that crap. You know, he can wash his hands of everything and say, i got nothing to do with that. Right. See, the, what they've done with the food concessions in that arena this year is a scandal. It's nothing short of a scandal. Right. They've, they've cut down the selections. They've cut the portion sizes down to like bird-like size portions, and they've jacked the prices up to a point where you'd be better off. It'd be cheaper to go out and get a steak dinner than eat uh, get a couple of burgers and a, and a coke. I'm serious. It's, it's, it's true. ridiculous. Hey, let me ask you this: Do you the, uh, and don't laugh too hard, but do you go into your own pocket to pay for your seats? Or no, does, no, uh, I, I do not. Oh, five. They, the station buys me all my. Uh, that's in my contract. They give me all my tickets. Hey, that's a good contract. You're damn right it is, and I got well, at least in that part of it it is. And I got news for you: if if it were they weren't the case, I wouldn't buy season tickets. I'd pick and choose what games I wanted to go to. Yeah, there's no way that people can afford to go up there game after game after game. And not only that, but I can't afford to do it, and I still wouldn't do it because I I'm telling you, the last three years I have gone in, in the old arena and in this joint, and there have been nights when I should have brought a book and a flashlight along because that's how much entertainment has gone on. 
That's the kind of quality product. No, seriously, that's the kind of quality product that this man has failed to produce for the public out there, and he wonders why we got why we're going to have like five, six thousand people there tonight. That's right. It's going to be empty tonight. I when think. you when you keep charging, you know, and you see it all. I mentioned this yesterday. I'll say it again. You watch these games like I do all over the league. You see thousands of empty seats all over the place. I'm watching in Jersey and Philadelphia last night the game in New Jersey, which they really have no fans. The Devils, in spite of the fact that they're you know right in the middle of about 30 million people there. And and they're playing the the Flyers. The Flyers tie the score at that time. And there's this tremendous cheer. I realize there's more Flyer fans than there are Devil fans in the stands because Philadelphia is right around the corner there. And and there's still thousands of empty seats. The same thing happens when they play the Rangers at Brendan Burns. Right, that's right. Or uh, what do they call it? Continental. What, what the, the empty arena is what they call it. Empty, <laughs> just like uh, uh, Nassau County Coliseum. Same thing. Three, four thousand people a night. You can't keep putting a mediocre product out. And by the way, the Devils have got a damn good team. They got an exciting young team, but they got a good team, and they still can't afford the, the punishment. They have priced the fans out of the market. Right. You got that right. Have a great day, pal. All right. Thanks. See you tonight. Okay. We got tickets for fifty cents a piece, but I know we don't. That's what they ought to do. Oh, don't do that. Don't go out here and say that. We got free tickets. To... No, we don't. Come on, don't say that. They'll get upset. They'll take away my Panther jersey. Five, six, seven. Oh, I mean, there's just no interest here. It's like the Marlins. There is no interest. You bring up the thing about John Henry in the stadium and the what's her name finally wrote a good column in the paper. That bitch, Linda Robertson. Uh, Henry's numbers just don't add up. Absolutely correct, man. Doesn't add up. Just say no to John Henry. Just say no to Wayne High. Just say goodbye to Wayne High Pinga. What a great week. Of course, you don't have a buyer yet. But at least we know he's selling, for sure. We can say goodbye to the cable company and Wayne Hypinga very soon. Oh. Let's have a party. Of course, he's going to have the Dolphins till he dies, he said. Well, let's see. When's that going to be? 20 before 1 at 5. Yeah, uh, Robert's looking at his watch. When's that going to be, Wayne, huh? Oh. Uh-oh. Hey. QAM's got the code. We've got a shot. we got a chance to be special. The <laughs> show. JJ in the hand. All season long. Here on Sports Radio 550. QAM. Holy Mackinac! This is Joe Bowen, the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and you're listening to the Hockey Authority Neil God. All right. Listen to me. This is Stan Beinstein for Sofa King. You understand? Where everything is held to the high Sofa King standards. The selection isn't just huge, it's Sofa King huge. Believe me, you'll never shop anywhere else. And Sofa King's prices aren't just low, they're Sofa King low. You'll never find them anywhere else. Listen to me. When I say Sofa King has a beautiful store, I mean Sofa King beautiful. When I say the staff is helpful, I mean Sofa King helpful. Listen to me. Get to know the Sofa King and enjoy a selection that's Sofa King huge. A staff that's Sofa King courteous and prices that are Sofa King low. You'll never shop anywhere else. But don't take it from me. Take it from satisfied customer Frank and Stein. Uh, Sofa King good. You said it, Frankie. So fucking good. 12.45 at 5.60 WQAM. So we aren't getting any. I guess we have to assume that it must be true that all the black guys out there hate Dan Marino because he's white and been very successful and they resent that. And because Mark Clayton and Mark Duver didn't get all the credit. And he actually got a little bit of credit for, like, tossing them the uh, the ball. Okay, we understand that. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. 877, we got 1,600 open lines, an hour and a quarter to go. You think we're going to make it today? No. We've actually accomplished quite a bit here today compared to Monday and Tuesday, compared to like the last seven days. You know, it's interesting. The one from West Palm that called the soccer mom or whatever she was talking about, she said, I thought the topic today was what else is it that you're listening to? And then she never talked about that. And she started giving me, started defending the indefensible, this uh, riot they had up there, these, uh, these lunatics, these maniacs, this aberrant behavior after a goddamn high school football game. I say stick all her ass in jail is what I say. Oh. There you go. And put Jesse in there with him. Oh. He might keep him company. Here's a mobile invoker. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, speaking about them dolphins, uh, this morning, you know. Speaking I'm about thinking, the dolphins. Yeah. Uh, you know, talking about what, the dolphins. Well, you know, this morning, what are the what is Goldie and them boys? What do they cater to? Uh, dumb jocks or something? Yeah. Because, uh, uh, you know. I, show. What do you want? Really, I picked up the Palm Beach putts this morning. Yeah. Uh, what do they got on the front page? Dan Marino controversy. Yeah. Threw the paper in the garbage. Turned on the radio. Listen to the boys this hey, morning. Hey, it's boring. It's old. It's very boring. Nobody, nobody with a yeah. brain wants to hear that anymore. Exactly. Here we got a team that's six and one in the toughest division in the in in, in the NFL. They're seven and one. Yeah. 
Uh, that too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Wayne's got the, the stadium filled. All the blackouts are lifted. It's like the old days in the Orange Bowl. Yeah. And, uh, I don't because, understand. This town likes to bellyache. That's all they want to do is bellyache. Unbelievable. They're unbelievable. Seven and, one and we got all these idiots calling, oh, what what happened to, uh, to what's his name there from uh, the Hurricanes? Whatever happened to that, the Schwarzer, uh, you know, yeah. that's injured all the time. You know, you know, I think, uh, JJ's going to do. Uh, when Marino gets better, he's going to pull Steve Spurrier, and he's going to switch quarterbacks back and forth. What do you think, Neil? Yeah, okay. Have a great day, pal. Oh, oh, i got such a headache. Oh, my God. Such a headache just from that call. Oh, yeah, but what about uh, Yentl Green? Oh, how's he how he be doing? We ran out here local with Barbara Streisand. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Nobody wants to hear any more about it. It is so ponderous and so boring and so terminal. Danny, boy, the, see, it used to be Danny and Jimmy, Danny and Jimmy. Now it's Danny and Damien. And like the guy said before, Damien, you know where the hell he came from. That's right. We need a good exorcism over there at the goddamn dolphin camp because they got a shot. Damien, my ass. How's Father Karras doing? In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw Father Karras and Alex Karras at the same time. Probably the same person. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. We're gonna have two thousand people at the Macaria tonight, boy. You know what? I'm gonna sit in all the goddamn seats. I'm gonna move all around. I don't have to worry about that jackball showing up with his little kids and standing up in front of me. I'm so sick and tired of those people. God, are you people rude? You're rude. You're not cute. You're not clever. You're not fun. I don't give a crap who you are. You're goddamn effing rude, is what you are. When a game is going on, I don't want to see your ass. I don't want to see your kids. I want to see the game. I make a tremendous effort to drive the four minutes from my house all the way over to the arena and get my free year reserve parking and go up there and get my free seat. Well, somebody paid for it. And these people up and down and back and forth, and let's get some more food, and let's go change some more diapers, and let's go do some more <coughs> potty or whatever the hell they're doing. And that's Grandpa that's doing the potty, not just the little kids. Just sit in a seat and while the game is going on, then there's a break. The there, little uh, light comes on over there, and that the little pink light comes on for the TV commercial, okay? That's a good time to get up and move on out. And don't come back too soon, by the way. That's a real good time. Or like, you know, when, that, when the green light comes on, it's the end of the period. That's a real good time to get up and move mosey on out and go do your thing, okay? <coughs> little of this, little of <coughs> that, whatever you want to do. Just stop being so freaking rude. It's not funny. It's not amusing. It's unacceptable. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to start making a scene with those people. Because the, the two jackballs they had sitting in their seats the last game, these two guys that I've never seen before, it must, it must, all with their friends. It must be, uh, they must all go to the same instructional school. Standing up and standing. And finally, at one point, we had to yell at them, hey, sit down. And they're right in front of me. Sit down. You assholes. <laughs> Here's Pompano. Hello. Neil, your show is so... Re- yeah, okay, great. But thanks for listening to it anyway. Thanks for listening to 560QM. And you're so ponderous, sir. Eight million calls we've had from the same old geezer in Hollywood. It must be bad when you get to be above 100, sir. It must be really depressing, you know, when the, when that magic moment, is, that last breath is only a, a few seconds away any day, the last gasp. In fact, you know something, pal? Maybe instead of Jimmy, maybe you're the one who ought to have a shot. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello? Uh, good morning, Neil. How are yes, you doing? sir. Good afternoon. I uh, yes, have too, too. Uh, question: You're talking about the uh, being able to receive the local stations on the small dishes. Yes, sir. Are you be able to get the local stations on the big dishes also? Oh uh, no. How come? Because they, they didn't make the deal with them. They made the deal. I, I don't believe so. They made the deal with Echo Star, which is one of the small dish companies, and with Hughes, which is Directv. They didn't make a deal with the big dish. Oh, okay. Isn't that what? a bitch? It is. That's pressing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. I mean, that's, that's the information I got. If anybody else has got different information, but I doubt it very much because that's what I read right there in a goddamn uh, article yesterday off the wherever it came from. Somebody sent me. And when somebody sends me something, uh, sometimes I believe it. Usually not. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. So anyway, this guy that used to work for Beasley over in Fort Myers, this 20-year-old kid, so uh, his girlfriend was sitting on top of him, and the mother came in, and, uh, yeah, he was raping her. And the mother came in and grabbed her ass off of there, so to speak, and uh, beat the hell out of him, beat him up, and uh, whipped her ass right home. That's a pretty great story. Here's a mobile in Jupiter. Hello. Mobile in Jupiter with the radio up. 
Hey, Neil, how you doing? Okay, sir. I'm, I just want to say I'm so tired of this whole state kissing Dan Marino's ass. Yeah, okay, good. Five six seven oh five sixty. Blow it out your ass, okay, pal? I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you Schwarzers that want to put down a guy who's a great athlete because he's not one of your people, okay? You are the most racist pe people I've ever seen in my life is American blacks. Thank God for the Jamaicans. Yeah, man. Thank God for the Haitians. Yeah, man. Thank God for the people from uh, the Peloponnesians. Yeah, man. That's right. What a bunch of racist pigs, man. You're not fooling me. Dan Marino, one of the classiest, one of the greatest people that ever uh, graced this town. Goes out there on that fourth down after he gets bushwhacked, after he gets just whomped, decimated. Comes back, throws the winning touchdown, 393 yards passing in that game, breaking every goddamn record in sight. And he's going to have to sit there and listen to you ungrateful sons of bitches with your bull crap on this radio station 20 hours a day. Not on this show, you're not going to hear it. So let's hear from some more sportsmen who don't like Dan Marino. No, I didn't say I'm going to leave him on the air very long. But I just there is the proof right there. There's another one. Another dark-complected guy that hates Dan Marino because he don't want to see any white folks in football. Well, that's right. Maybe, like I said, the punters and the place kickers, that's okay. That's not work for real athletes, you know, like those big 400-pound linemen. They're real athletes. <laughs> big, fat slobs. How could anybody with any self-respect make a comment like that and go back and look in the mirror tomorrow when you're shaving? And by the way, I sure hope the blade ain't too sharp, sir. Shame on you. Shame on you. The good people come along in this town. That's all you got for them, okay? A zets and dreared. The assholes come along like Wayne Hypinga and you're sucking his toes. Oh, thank you, Ms. or OJ at that golf tournament. Oh, can I have your autograph, Mr. Simpson? Can I, uh, can you touch me? Can I touch you? Could, could I see that scar on your finger? Is it healed yet? You're kind of a cut above the rest, OJ. Like I said, we got millions of people in this country, never met a scumbag they didn't like. That's why they like Jimmy so much. Never met a scumbag he didn't like. Just like that Hurricane team, man, out there at the Fiesta Bowl. Well, that, that was something to be proud of, man, with their fatigues on. I think that's why they lost the game, fatigue. Yeah, probably too much carousing. They were fatigued when the game started. Got their asses kicked after opening up, trash talking, opening up a big mouth, and then got their asses beat by Penn State, I believe. Wasn't that it? Yeah, it was, Penn State. Yeah, poor Jimmy. Poor Jimmy. He was out in the desert after that game. He was so depressed out there in Arizona. That's right. Fell down on some sharp object, didn't know what it was. It just fell like a prick. Yeah, I knew you'd say that. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. That Florida line, we're waiting for some more sparses that don't like Dan Marino to call it. I dare you to do it. Come on. I dare you to open up a mouth and rip a legend. You ungrateful bastard, you. 877-785-NEAL. 877-785-6345. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Neil, you are God. Yes, I am. Yes, I know. Neil, God. Just ask me. I'll tell you. Second thing, uh, the, the Dan Marino controversy, there is no controversy. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to talk about it. I'll, if I, if we got Schwarzes calling in, I want to rip them. I'll let them on for two seconds. There's no, I understand right. that. There's no controversy. I know. The only time you should have a controversy is if we're losing. We're winning. So have those douchebags shut the hell up. Yeah, well, tell the sports polls that. They got nothing else to talk about, okay? Amen. And God bless you, whatever you said. Anybody know what he said? No. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. We got them at least a little bit rattled today. At least they're rattling their spears. Did anybody respond to my question? They're all listening to the Jim Rome show now. That's the problem. We get a response here about it, but they're all listening to the goddamn Jim Rome show. No. Yeah, they are. They're all in Rome. They're all with the goddamn Pope. And by the way, speaking of the Pope, I almost forgot about this new phone card. Let's uh, users reach out and touch the Pope. He's already got a CD out. Why shouldn't he have a phone card out? That's right. Sports Radio 560. QAM. It's not just the one to two hour, it's a phenomenon. Howdy! Hi, I'm Spike, and you know, when I'm driving.
the damn Route 9 W on a hot summer day, me and the missus always stop at Dickens. Dickens Fruit Stand. They've got everything from fruit to vegetables, homemade pies, but there is nothing like their cider. Ain't that right, honey? Uh-huh. Dickens Cider. Yes, sir. Why, even though we were late for church last Sunday, she had to have a little Dickens Cider. Uh-huh. She says there ain't nothing like it. Even my minister says his wife enjoys a little dick inside her now and then. Hey, why don't you bring some home in our protective plastic rib bottle? That way it'll stay fresh. Or you can let it sit a while and have some hard dick inside her. Uh-huh. It's good at lunch, good at dinner, and there's nothing like waking up with a dick inside her. Dickens Fruit Stain, just off Route 9W and Country Road 69. Open 24 hours, because after a chilly summer night, I like to snuggle up in bed with a hot dick inside. Mmm. Mm. 102 at 560 WQAM. That out of town line, by the way, is sitting there a real vacant. Let's keep it that way. What do you say? Here's uh, my good friend Bob from the Dick Insider T-shirts. Happy belated. Thank you. Uh... I had to call you because I heard something on one of the morning shows the other day with Mr. Jesse Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. They were talking about the kids uh, being thrown out of school. Mm -hmm. And I think, I forget who was Matt or one of them, whoever was reporting it, said, well, they have the option to go to a special school, I think it was. That's correct. And Mr. Jackson said, well, they don't have basketball at that school, and it would hurt their future prospects. Well, isn't that a shame? Maybe they shouldn't have been involved in mob violence in the first time. They should have thought about that, you know? I they mean, don't have basketball. Isn't that a bad break? I know. And, and the thing, why doesn't he get involved? You know, remember the girl that was killed outside the club, that 15-year-old girl? Yeah. That was killed about four or five months ago outside the, that the, club? The, the pregnant one, yeah. Well, she had, in the news, it really upset me. No one made a thing about it, that she died, and she left a three-year-old son or child. Mm-hmm. Now, she was 15. Right. That kid was three years old. Right. She was 11 years old. Mm-hmm. And why isn't he getting involved with his, you know, with children having children? Right. Instead of worrying about these thugs beating and up. And teaching uh, people in the ghetto about birth control and Planned Parenthood and about not abandoning their kids and things like that. You know, value system as opposed to running around sticking his nose in a politically uh, correct Well, he's just situation. worried that they, they're not going to play basketball. Isn't that a shame? I mean, I couldn't believe that. I don't that. think I'll be able to sleep tonight. All right. I just want to... Say that and wish you a real happy birthday and many more. Thanks, Bob. Okay, bye. See ya. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line on that Florida line is eight seven 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 eight five Neil. So you do understand that all this Marino bashing, it's the dark folks out there that want to pick on Danny Boy. That's right. In fact, even when you hear a guy call his station that's ripping dead, that sounds like a white guy. It's a dark guy doing a white guy's voice. I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Yeah. Because the white folks, they appreciate Dan Marino. It's only the New Yorkers and those Spartans that want to rip him in the ass that don't appreciate because he's a white guy and they're jealous of his great success and his tremendous ability. You know, it's like when Walter Payton died the other day. Walter Payton was great. I loved Walter Payton. He, he was just it was worth the price of admission just to watch him run. He was fantastic. He was black. Did that make me any less sad when he died? No. That he was, what do I care what color he is? He was a superstar. But I'm telling you, man, we've got some real, real bad racism, and not all of it is by white people, okay? I think it's about time to start calling the, uh, for the pot to stop calling the kettle purple, is what I think. A lot of wicked, nasty racism out there disguised as something else. You're not fooling this old fag, I'll tell you that right now, okay? You're not fooling me. Because when it comes to racism, just remember one thing. It takes one to know one. Here's a mobile in West Palm Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. How are you? Pretty good. Whatever that means. Yes, sir. Uh, um, big time hockey fan, just like you. Was born and raised in Hartford, Connecticut. Grew up watching the Hartford Whalers. Sorry about, about those Whalers, sir. Yeah, they should have drawn big crowns in uh, Carolina. Yeah, I know. It's Two, three hundred a game. Better, yeah. Um, Pack them in there. <laughs> like sardines, huh? Yeah. But anyways, um, I have the NHL center ice on the satellite dish at home, and. Um, I watch all the games, all right. the announce. I hear all the announcers and stuff. I don't know if it's just me, but I think Jeff Rimmer is the worst announcer out of them all. He's no, just, no, he's not he's, the worst. He's so boring, though. He sounds like he should be conducting a, a ceremony for somebody who died, though. I mean, that's he said yeah. he shows no emotion whatsoever. Yeah, but he's, not, he's not the worst, worst though. He's not, I he's, know. Not, he's not worse than the guy who does the hurricane games, for example. Forsman? Huh? John, For- John Forsman? Oh, I don't even know what that guy is. He's terrible. 
He's, he's, not, he's not worse than John Kelly, who does the Colorado Avalanche. Who, who I mean, uh, every time John Kelly opens his mouth, his dad is rolling in his grave thinking, just shut up and go home already, you know? He's the one that goes, he scores like okay, that, he huh? Just, he just tries to imitate his, his dad, who was great. Dan Kelly was one of the all-time greats. John Kelly ain't no Dan Kelly, okay? He's an embarrassment. He's you know humiliating. Who I, you know who I that like? Rookie, your... That rookie! That rookie! Oh, he did. I just, I, oh, I get the chills just thinking about John Kelly. I'm getting goosebumps. He's so bad. You're... Your buddy in uh, Pittsburgh, Mike Lang, he's pretty good. Mike Lang, what do you mean? What are you pretty good? What what to you is good? Who's good? Um, I I I I, mean, well, I don't give know. Give me a name. Yeah, I mean, Mike Lang is great, but you said he's pretty good. So I'm assuming that there must be somebody a hell of a lot better than him. Who's really good? Who's tremendous? The, well, I mean, I really wouldn't know names. I would know more by the team. By well, how about by Joe team. Bowen, who's the greatest hockey announcer who ever lived in the Toronto Maple Leafs? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, and then the guys for CBC's Hockey Night in Canada, they Bob do a Cole, great job, too. man too. Cole, when they wake him up, yeah, he's okay. Right. They give him a little oxygen. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I just, I'm just not a big fan of Jeff Rimmer. Well, I'm gonna, I'll pass that along. I'm going to call him this afternoon as soon as I get home. I'm going to tell him. Guy called me today and says, you suck. Yeah. I'm going to tell him that. Thank you. And I have appreciate a great that. Okay, have a great day. How do you like that, huh? A lot of calls about hockey today. They stunk. Oh, come on, Rimmer. Stop being such a sour ass, huh? He bought lunch, by the way, yesterday. Anybody believe that? No. He bought lunch for Jiggs. Well, he feels sorry for him. You know, it was Jiggs' 100th birthday. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. And that line nine, take a look at it, baby. Listen to this and cry. I had a fight. I had a scream. I had a yell. I had a push. We got to have that line for our friends over there on the West Coast, Fort Myers especially, and the people in Palm Beach. So they can call toll free like a real radio station, and that line just sits there dormant like a goddamn dead church mouse, like a dead trouser trout. Eight seven 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 eight five Neil. See, they keep putting the K in there on the Neil, you know. That's the no, seriously. A lot of people trying to call. They keep spelling it with a K, as in Neil on this. Eight seven 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 eight five sixty three forty five. I want. I want that thing. I want to pick it up, Cole. I just. I'm just. Just waiting. Told you. Oh, too bad. Oh, and you know something? Speaking of him, you think Woody's bad. This guy, I wish George would have saved on the voicemail one day we had from this guy. It must have gone on for eight minutes. Seriously. And if, if anybody had a, a butterfly net, they would have chased this guy to the ends of the earth to make sure they could put him away. This is Andy, Andy, Andy. And this went on for like seven or eight minutes. And he would like take a breath. Andy, Andy. This is a certifiable lunatic, this this thing. I would say this person, this thing. It is Andy, 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 Andy. Yeah. I'm getting paid money to talk to to people like this every day. People that should definitely be put away behind bars, behind a, a very bit like Renfield. Yeah, he makes Renfield look like your average ordinary, uh, you know, football fan. This is AD, AD, AD. Oh yeah, maybe George saved that. Maybe we got it. T- In fact, that kills some good time. Nine minutes after one at five sixty WQM. Where's my meat? Hey, baby, I'm feeling kind of hungry. What's the lunch? Come here, Nutty. I'm going to make you a funky nickel sandwich. Very good nutrition. <laughs> Vitamins and all. Help you build your muscle. Just play basketball. When you need some bread. It's Stevie Wonder Bread. If you ain't white bread, honey, jam on it. Yeah, jam on this, baby. 115 at 560 WQM. We got Hank Goldberg at 2 in the studio, no less. Not doing one of those outside deals, but that's pretty rare. And then we got uh, Boog Shambi. Will the studio hold them both? No. 6 o'clock tonight. And then we got the pregame with Geldy at 7 o'clock. Don't be picking on Jiggs McDonald anymore. Geldy, I know you want his job. I know you feel that he's a doddering old man. And don't suck up to him to his face and come on here and rip him an ass and play his calls and then play circus music behind it. Although it was kind of entertaining. We got the Atlanta Thrashers at the Florida Panthers at the Macarena at night. Oh. Are going to be there? No. I'll be there. I'll be there with bells on. We love those Panthers. They're really great. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then they're picking on Pavel Burry, too, because he's a white guy. Who they? See, all you white guys out there that come to the games that are cottoning up to the Sparta of Peter Worrell, who, by the way, he's injured and playing again. He's always injured now, thank God. You're always sucking up to him. You see, I hate to break the news to you, but you're backing yourselves into a corner because the game plan is for all the sports to belong to the Spartans in this country. Don't you understand that? No. Don't you get it? That's why they're pissed off about Dan Marino. They don't want no white superstars in there. They want Sparta superstars. That's right. Randall Cunningham. There'll be a quarterback for you. That's our boy. Yeah, Randall Cunningham. One day he played good. Next week he, uh, well, he forgot. Whatever. Like that McNair kid from Tennessee. Was he good or what? No. Hey, he hit Sam Jackson in the hand three times in a row. What was his name? Samuel Jackson Adams? And by the way, how's the Yentl Green doing? Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Hello. Hello, uh, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, man. Oh, uh, man, um, I'm a black fag from Fort Lauderdale, and you're cracking me up. Okay. Now, I just have to say this, sir, that um, I've been a Dolphin fan all my life. I mean, I remember when they were, uh, you know, doing real well. I'm from up in the Midwest. I'm from Cincinnati where the Bengals suck, and I'm glad to be down here now. Yeah, the I Bengals, love. The Bengals blow, baby. Hey, I, Dan Marino's a fine-looking man. Yeah. And uh, not only that, I'm very nervous, so let me just finish this. Fine-looking man. The Linda Mari's a fine-looking man. Everybody isn't prejudiced. I know you just have to be. I know you're not prejudiced, and I know you're just rousing everybody up, getting people like me to call. That's you're right. hilarious. It worked like a charm, didn't it? You, you got me to call. Up. Right. I about drove off the wall. So Danny, I mean, off the wall. Danny said uh, you're not his type this week. I, I understand that, but... Yeah, uh, he, will, I still... he, will, he will let you shower with him before uh, the man gets too, <laughs> man gets too uh, animated. I called once before about um, a pizza thing up in Tampa, and uh, I don't know how that ever worked out or whatever, about a pizza place not delivering to a certain neighborhood or whatever. Yeah. Um, all had aside, sir, you're, you're, you're hilarious, you're funny, keep up the good work. And I'm glad, I'm, I'm, I can hear in your tone of your voice that you're just getting that. And, by, and by the way, you'll be pleased to know that Godfather's Pizza is uh, the CEO of that chain is the dark complected guy. There, I didn't know that. Another yeah, thing is, when you, when you use the, the Spartans, baby, I'm sorry. Go there, when you say Spartans, so keep in mind, most most of us don't know what that means. Nor do you know, uh, you know. And Sparta just means black. Sparta okay, is I a did. black man, and Sparta is a black woman. Yeah, I told it's you this. So, it's so much better word than like nigger or coon or spook or cloud or darky hey, porch monkey. It, it's, I always you know, thought there was, was a bad nice word. I always thought it was a tad derogatory. I remember when I dated my first boyfriend. Well, that, that's he like, said that that was like, a tad. That's like goy. I mean, Jews call Gentiles goyim, and okay. goy, it can be used like, uh, you know, oh, she's married to Shiksa, which is like a, uh, you know, a uh, guy okay. who's a, a Gentile. But it could also be sarcastic. Well, then you've like educated you could say, you you educated me. You could say cracker, and it wouldn't necessarily be sarcastic, although probably okay. would. Okay, okay. Well, hey, keep up the good work. I'm glad that uh, I was able to call in and get it off my chest. It's a little bit better, and uh, come visit Fort Lauderdale. Hey, come to the Copa sometime. No say thanks. hi. No thanks. Okay, bye-bye. Have a great day. All used meat. Five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm worried about that dangerous used meat. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yeah. And into, into which I'm not really that much into dark meat. Kind of like light dark, like Malcolm on the Young and the Horny. There's my style. Oh, my God. This is about, you know, something. We've taken more calls today than I have in the last uh, four weeks. That, that's the goddamn truth. And I can thank that guy in Orlando, by the way, that got everybody all whipped up and paranoid. Like I said, Phil's a good guy. Are you sure? Well, I mean, you know, he's okay. But this uh, this notion that all of a sudden because they put Jim Rome on here, I mean, would anybody listen to Romy? No. I, and by the way, I'd rather, rather listen to Homie than Romy. For all you dark guys out there, yeah. Well, what's with it? This guy's a good guy. Of course, he's a fag, so he's not uh, so intimidated. But all you other dark, you macho black guys that don't like Dan Marino, what's wrong with you guys? Why don't you spit it out? I always do. Here's a mobile in Hialeah. Hello. We almost got through a whole show without any phone shenanigans. How do you like that? Oh, it's all fixed. It's all straightened out now. Attaboy, Duff. Attaboy, Duff. Attaboy, George. I'm not talking about my George. He's on vacation. George Corso. That boy, Bob DeMuth, our goddamn rocket scientist engineering maven from the West Coast. You know, see, if I'm if I'm like a corporate engineer and I'm like headquarters in Naples for the Beasleys, what does that tell you what a rocket scientist I am? And by the way, Bob DeMuth, that button to start the remote spots over there in Fort Myers, it still doesn't work. Oh! Yeah, still don't work. So the PD over there, yeah, he, he's the one that ought to be crying, that PD. Got to sit on a board for four hours and endure this show every day. With no delay, by the way. 
got to sit over there in Fort Myers and uh, and play the spots because their engineering staff is incompetent. Do I dare punch that up again? Hello? Oh, oh, e, oh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. It's the witch doctor. Listen to that. Well, let me try it again. Let me see if I can get a better connection. Hello? Is somebody on this line? Hello? It's line seven. Hello? Is there anybody out there on this line? This is the F up line. It sucks. What's going on here? Our phone bug. Okay. Let's, uh, oh, here's a call from Atlanta. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. I have two questions I want to hang up. What, what is with this? What's with the overhead now? What's with the whole phones are all screwed up again? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, Actually, I, I miss what was said about Marino by Blacks, and I'd like to know, has the same thing been said about Elway or Brett Favre? Well, what, what, what does that mean? Elway and Brett Favre don't play here. Oh, this this phone thing is unacceptable. Our whole phone system just went crazy. <laughs> Can you hear it? Does it sound like I'm talking in a barrel? Sir? Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Let me say it again. John Elway and whoever else you mentioned don't play here. I understand that, but, I mean, what was said in the first place? What was, said is that, what was said is that black guys don't like Dan Marino because they're jealous of the fact that when, uh, when you know, his greatest years, that Mark Duper and Mark Clayton were the receivers, were black, and didn't, they were great receivers, which everybody knows. They didn't get the credit. He got all the credit, and therefore they resent it, and they don't like him because basically he's a white guy. That's what's no, being said. I, I, I always, I've always liked Marino. The thing yeah. is that he's never had a defense behind him like he has now. And the thing is, it's also a team effort, which, which we're showing right now. Uh, everybody, everybody is doing everything. Well, what do you mean we? I thought you were in Atlanta. I am. I'm Aren't a you? Dolphin fan. Though. You were a Dolphin fan in LA. You, you abandoned the Falcons. <laughs> Please, never. Oh, okay. Never. Ever I, I thought they, they might have one fan. I thought they might have one. No. After that, after that fluke year they had last year. No, I'm not Atlanta anything. Good. No, sir. Don't be one of those front-running uh, Braves phonies either. Those are the phoniest fans in the world. But, I mean, I, I don't see what, you know, Duper and Clayton, that really didn't have anything to do with it. Well, but I'm, you, it's asked me, that, you asked me a question. I'm just giving you an answer. I mean, that's uh, that's their excuse, what I'm hearing. That's, that's a poor excuse. Card. Yeah, that's a piss poor excuse. You're right. Well, listen, pal, hang in there. All right. And, uh, oh, the Thrashers are here tonight. Goodness. <laughs> that's what I said. Have a great day, pal. <laughs> we'll thrash them for you. How do you like that? Oh! Yeah, this this uh, what what's going on here with these speakers with this overhead with the phone? This whole system is just blowing up, and our engineers are walking around going, yeah. like that. they can't get it right, they can't get it done. We almost had a semblance of a show here today until about twenty after one in the afternoon, and all of a sudden, when we least expected it, what what is that? What's on there? Hello, hello. Hello? Okay. Well, I can just diddle with that all day in line seven, too. Yesterday it was line four. Today it's line seven. Plus, yesterday we had three or four other lines that were effed up, too. We had like half the phone was all screwed up. Day after day after day, I'm sitting here trying to do a radio show, and Greg Reed walks in here with a straight look on his face saying, oh, gee, well, this thing, and he looks at the phone like like he's going to see something, like there's going to be things sticking out of it, like, like Pavel's uh, little pinky is going to be sticking off to the side, you know? Yeah, it's a piece of crap, okay, Greg? It's like all your other equipment, all the other Beasley's garbage, reused, rehashed swill. It's a piece of crap, not ready for broadcast is what it is. Greg, here's Lauderdale Lakes. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you? Okay. How do you insist on this thing about the black guys in Dan Marina? What do you mean I insist on? That's what I'm hearing. It's, it's, don't believe the hype, Neil. Yeah. Don't believe Why, you like I... that you like that honky, that Danny boy? Well, I like Dan Marina. I told you that yesterday. Well, then why are you call me again today? We don't need to hear it two days later. There is the one guy, and he's calling me every day to prove a point. Yesterday was good enough, pal. We believe you. Do we believe him? No. Well, maybe. What am I going to do about this guy? Well, I'll just do the best I can. That's all we can do. That's all we can do with this overhead, with that goddamn line seven thing. <laughs>
God. There you go. Right there. The last 30 seconds. That's the epitome of Beasley Reed Broadcasting, ladies and gentlemen. That's our technical expertise to a T right there. Let's hear it for George Corso and Greg Reed and the Beasley boys if they're out of jail this week. Let's hear it for all those guys. Jesus Christ, are you ever, ever going to get the message, sir? No. No. You know, one day he's going to walk in here and there's going to be like a little midget, like a three-foot-tall midget. No, seriously, he's sitting in this chair about a quarter to ten. He's going to say, well, where's Neil? Oh, he's long gone. Won't see him no more. Yeah, Johnny Paleo with the harmonica cats. He's going to be playing harmonica music between ten and two. Yeah, but where'd Neil go? Oh, he won't see him. 26 after one at 560 WQAM. At Wake up with the first team. Joe Rose, Jeff DeForest, and Steve Goldstein. No. Weekday mornings at 6. Only on Sports Radio 560 QAM. I wanted to uh, give you the real thing here, Neil. Yeah. Yeah. We dance like this things we sing. Like pussies, but we must tell you, yes. we swear we're not gay. If you want these outfits to class, they would take your ass. We got Don't we believe, Nick? No. 2074 2 at 560 WQAM, 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. It's amazing because we actually mostly, aside from line 7, got the phone straightened out today and had about 20 million phone calls. Now this stuff with the overheads and the volume and with stuff that we almost never had before is coming in. New stuff, new crap. Kind of like, kind of like, what a disappointment, you know? When you want it, it just doesn't uh, howl on cue. Can't stand it like the wolf man. Doesn't howl on cue. Here's Fort Myers. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I was uh, just wondering, as bad as everything's going around there uh, this week with all the phone lines and everything, what are you going to do when the uh, hotkeys stop working and you can't get any of those noises anymore? When the what? When, uh, when you're dropped. The noises. The, the noises. Yeah. Stop working. What are you going to do when those stop working? I don't know. I don't know. I'll just hey, do real. I'll just do real ones. You'll just do real ones? Here's one. Yeah, that was real. Dave Roberts, who says, uh, let me give you the real stuff here, Neil. No, it's uh, Brian Orcross. And I can't talk to you because this phone. uh, The phone is like feeding back into itself now. Our phone system is totally effed up, by the way. Is there anybody in the building now? No. We got an engineer? No. A program director? No. Anybody with an IQ bigger than their thumbnail? No. No. The whole, the whole, listen to that. The overhead just vanished, and the only way I get any overhead stuff is like through the phone, and it's all feeding back. Oh, this this is a goddamn nightmare, this joint. It, it's unbelievable. Things that never happened before now de- de- developing, and the general managers are running around, oh, hey, we're doing this, we're doing that, bada-beep, bada-beep, yeah. I'm really impressed, man. 
Just give us a studio that works. I know that's a little bit beyond your scope. It's a little bit out of league. Over there at Power 96 down all, they got a studio, man, you could eat off the floor. They got state-of-the-art everything. They got a phenomenal, palatial, $80 billion studio. They're buying the goddamn audience. They're giving away $50 billion a day. Over here to my right, you got the goddamn sports studio over there. Big, gigantic place with 55 microphones, 85 chairs, a big circuit, like a real talk studio. What do we got? That's what we got. Pure, unadulterated, Crap. that's what we got for the highly rated Neil Rogers show. Garbage. It's getting real old, Greg. It's getting real oldy and moldy. You can smell it. Here's a mobile in Palm Beach. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Okay. Those people that run that station are a bunch of goddamn assholes. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better myself. Hey, I was hearing you talking about all the different adjectives you have for the uh, black black folks. Yes, sir. And I got a new one for you. Yeah. It's uh, called scabones. As in a bunch of scabones. S c a b o n e s. What is that? Is like a like a movie? Oh, that's like a bunch of scabones playing scabal. Oh, okay. Scabal. And it's scabones. No, that's basketball, not not basket. It's basketball. So big scabones. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Thank you very much for your brilliant contribution. Of course, he's in Palm Beach. No sparsers allowed in Palm Beach, are there? No. No. Kennedys won't allow it. Here's a Pompano. Hello. Hey, good afternoon, Neil. Yes, I'm one of your white Canadian non-racial listeners uh, All right. from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Oh, Winnipeg. I bet we got a lot of good white people up there. Yeah. Well, that and the Indians, but. Uh... But uh, just, you know, listening to you all the time on the radio, because I'm always on the road and stuff. But yes, uh, I'll tell you, going back to a couple of listeners that you had uh, before, the guy was talking about the hockey announcers. That guy went no Mike Ling from Katie Lang. That, that's right. How do you like this guy? He's, starting, he's criticizing Rimmer, and then I say, okay, well, you, and, you know, Rimmer's like in the middle. He knows what I think of his work. He's, uh, you know, you know he's, he's acceptable. Hey, what are you going to do with Rimmer? I mean, you know, he's... Hey, yeah, he's an old fart. He's not going to get any better. He's not going to get any worse. You see, what you see is what you get. He's okay. He does a good, uh, decent job. And especially compared to Denise, he's fantastic. But, I mean, you know, this guy's going to critique people. At least give me some names, okay? And they says, well, that guy from Pittsburgh, I'm like, he's okay. He's okay? Okay. He's the, I would say he's probably in the top three announcers in the NHL. I Correct. Mean, that's right. But the, Joe I, Bullen being number one and Mike Lang being number two. Can you do me a favor? Can you and play Nick Jennerette being uh, swinging back and forth two and three with Mike Lang. Can you do me a favor? Can you play a little Mike Lang? Oh, jeez. Please there, Neil. Oh, a little Mike Lang. For, for the boys back in Manitou. He was close down to center right. Robitaille. And Sampson takes it out of a traffic jam. The way to Cullet. Cullet moving to the side. It's on Robitaille. Hey! and scores. Luke Robitaille gives the penguin the lead four to three. And Paul Bray doesn't know whether to cry or wind his watch. All right. There you go, a little bit of Mike Lang. I'm in a good mood today for hockey because we got the big game coming up tonight. I bet you we have at least 2,500 people there tonight. What do you say? 25? Uh-huh. 25 people, not 2,500, just 25. I, without this overhead, man, I'm not worth a crap. But, of course, thank God the show's almost over. We'll come in tomorrow and see what kind of technical hijinks they can come up with here at 2 a.m. Maybe it'll be something like... Thank you. Anybody listening around the world and uh, in the internet, that's it. That's WQAM. That's 560. If you thought it was embarrassing when you read about that OJ business at the golf tournament and the uh, OJ related expenses and all that other humiliation and embarrassment, these people don't embarrass easily. Okay, do you get my drift? Do uh-huh. you understand it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Because when you're as stupid as they are, I mean, you don't know what dumb is all about. You follow me? That's the second day in a row I did that because it just it just fits right in. It's perfect. It's just perfect. That's the second day in a row that even this thing is not uh, yeah. operating right. Every, everything in here is a piece of crap. Where's Kathy Lee? Speaking of crap. 21 before 2. It's almost over, baby. It's going to feel so good when the pain stops here at QAM. This is 560 QAM. Jim Mandich talks sports. All right. Yes, right here on Sports Radio 560 QAM. If you blow too much, you're in trouble. We got them all today, baby. 
Open that closet door. Here they come. It's so hard to be myself because the group that I'm in sounds like everyone else on the charts and the old dance. And we sing just like girls and we wear really tight things. All right. With a cheap boy, or are we made of condition, or anything, cause I'm confused, I got no clue, I don't know what band I'm in, baby it's for two men, the sounds all around. To find the answers in the bathtub. It's uh, 16 till 2 at 560 WKM. Speaking of the bathtub, by the way, I finally, during the uh, break, figured out figured out why uh, the black folks are so jealous of Dan Marino. See, there's this stereotype that black guys are like hung like a moose, you know, those large, gigantic, enormous penises. And uh, Joe Rose was telling me this morning that Dan Marino, that, you know, of course, the two have showered together. Not when they were playing together, I'm talking like recently. And he says, Danny is hung, he says, like down to his knees, man. So that's why you black guys are jealous, because Dan Marino, just like Milton Berle and Warren Beatty, he breaks this stereotype of very sh- short-penised white guys, you know, in sports. Like that Pavlov Bury. Here's a Cutler Ridge. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One name, Dwight Stevenson. If, yeah. gonna, if, if, if the Schwarzer is going to envy anybody over Dan Marino, it shouldn't be. Duper and Clayton, it should be Dwight Stevenson, possibly yeah. the best center that Correct. ever played football. Yeah, did, now, did he have a large penis? Probably. Well, I'll take your word for it. Okay, well, I don't know. I mean, if Joe, I knew, I'd Joe, tell you. Joe Rose probably knows. He seems to know about those things. Well, absolutely the best center in all time. His career was cut short right. early, and, that injury. And, and do we resent Dwight Stevenson because he was black? No, absolutely, no. no, absolutely yeah. not. No. I mean, do we, do we resent Olindo Mari because he's Italian and white? Of course not. I thought he was an Argentine. Well, we we had a big discussion about that yesterday. He's maybe from Argentina, but he'd be Italian. Well, most of most of the Argentinians that come up here are from Italy. There you go. Initially. Well, who cares where he's from? But I mean, you know, he's, exactly. without him, they'd be uh, in uh, deep trouble. They'd be in deep crap. No, but if, they, if they're going to talk about something that's overlooked in 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 terms of you know race, right? Yeah, yeah. Not but, even race, yeah, you just see, position. But position. You, you, position. Want, you got to understand, a center is not a glamorous position. Exactly. Any yeah. guy that bends down and, you know, a guy comes up behind and puts his hands under his crotch, that's not a glamorous position. But the wide receivers, that's always been, a you know, like Paul Warfield, those guys, glamorous position. But, but, but it, you know, briefly it's a glamorous position. What is it? Briefly it's a glamorous position. Yeah, well, that's what Danny said. Okay, have a great day, pal. <laughs> oh, can we, I, I see Robert's got a strange look on his face, a quizzical look, like he doesn't understand that. I think what the guy was trying to say was, were you fudge packing? Yeah, something like that. Oh, you know what I just realized? One of these speakers is out, I think. Maybe that's why we're having this problem. I believe because I heard Matt. Let me try it again. Were you fudge packing? Yeah, see, that's all over here. There's nothing over there. That's why the monitor is way down. Maybe the speaker is like disconnected or discombobulated, or maybe it's just a, p- a cheap piece of crap. Maybe that's the problem. Like all the other Beasley stuff. Maybe it's just a cheap piece of turd. Yeah, I, I guarantee you that this speaker over here on my left, that one's working, and this one's not, so that when I have to crank the thing up real loud, then it starts feeding back through the phone, and you get awful horrendous sounds like... Well, what is that, by the way? 
Besides bad, it'd be bad, baby. This one I thought we could actually hear it, then all of a sudden the Wolfman starts again. Oh, my God. This, this is amazing. There's not another radio station in America. Even the kids at Piper High are laughing up their sleeve, and they're laughing their asses off. Which, by the way, speaking of kids, you know, I... I hesitate to mention this on the air. You don't look a gift horse in the mouth because at least this year, unlike in past years, you know, the kids that hang out in the street corner when I'm dry, getting ready to come to work in the morning and I leave the house and I drive. I know I'm like right on my corner there waiting for the school bus. And there's like the high school kids regularly before I get up. And then there's like the little punky kids. And then there's like four different groups. Now, unlike the kids of the past years that when I would drive by, hey, faggot, you know, that stuff, which I didn't bother me, but, I mean, that's what you expect from little punky, stupid kids. This year, there's actually like a few kids that I pretended like they don't know who I am. Like, they wave. They're, like, friendly. And I thought, well, that's that's pleasant because when you meet anybody that's friendly down here, it, you know, puts a little bit. Like my friend uh, Sylvia at the Turnpike, who, by the way, wished me happy birthday when I left on Friday as I drove home. Thank you, Sylvia. That's for you, sweetheart. She's the best. But anyway, so, like, this morning, you know, these are the same same people, the same kids. Like, I know them, not by name. I know them. They know who I'm. This morning, I'm, I get back out of my garage. I get up to the corner there. I give a wave. You know, there's like half a dozen kids down the corner. They look at me like, uh, I would say, yeah. like, me like a blank look. I thought, okay, did I pee on your parade, guys? What's the story, huh? It's kind of like this place, you know? Like getting on the elevator with Screwan yesterday, and she thinks I'm going to talk to her. It's kind of like that deal in reverse. She's got the nerve to be opening up a mouth saying hello to me. I don't want to talk to you, screw Ann. I don't want to know from you. I don't want to speak to you. I don't want to see you. I don't want to <laughs> smell you. Or Roy. some of your good friends. Oh, what a thought that is. Here's a, a mobile in Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing today? Okay. Oh, that's uh, that feedback again. Oh, this is killing me. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I haven't. I didn't catch all the show today. Did anybody? Why not? What were, you, what were you listening to between ten and noon, sir? I was working. Okay. I know that. You better not be listening to any other station out there because we're doing a survey on this, and if we find out anybody <laughs> is, we're going to send Luca Brazzi over. Uh, did anybody mention that the Scum Sentinel printed last week's hockey schedule on a paper Monday and Tuesday? No. No. Like an idiot, my buddy Chuck and I are sitting there last night waiting to watch the Penguins lose again, and here they're not on. Oh. And uh, so we go to the center ice to make sure, and we look, and there's nothing on there. So I said, okay, well, it's a scum sentinel. You, you, you have to just understand that they're screwed up. Mm-hmm. So I have my wife go on the Internet to NHL.com. She prints out the Penguin schedule. Yeah. And on the schedule, it's got the, the game on the 20th with the Penguins here. It's got it as being on the 19th on the NHL schedule. So I had to toss that one to trash, and then I guess tonight I'll have to go on the Penguins website and uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's there unbelievable. That's all that good hockey information we get down here, and they wonder why we have no fans. Yeah. All right, I just I, I didn't know.